Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Network, 200, 500, I don't know, a whole bunch of stations coast to coast. I hear different numbers all the time. But also on the internet, all around the world, every weekend. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, October 15th, 2022. This is episode 1935. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. There's so many podcasts out right now, and it takes a team of people to bring them together. Whether you're hiring for a podcast or for your growing business, one place makes it easy, Zip Recruiter. And now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash tech guy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Well, it's time to talk tech, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> 8888, ask Leo the phone number. What is talking tech? Talking tech is talking about anything with a chip in it, anything digital, so I guess that's a better way of putting it. Anything that's composed of ones and zeros at the very bottom of it. Because the internet has no chips in it. <laughs> there are, well, there are chips in it, but there aren't, well, anyway. <laughs> Computers, smartphones, smart watches, virtual reality glasses. I just, I, I don't know. I think I do this for you. You understand I do this for you. Purchased Meta's new... Uh, virtual reality uh, glasses, the, uh, what is it called? The Quest Pro. Quest Pro at a whopping 1,700 schmackers. An advanced VR device. I feel like every, you know me, I'm not, I'm, I'm uh, bearish. Thumbs down on VR. Not a big fan of the virtual reality. But every few years I feel like, well, I could be wrong. I know, hard to believe. I could be wrong, but I should check. So I should check. I should see. I should say, hmm, has, has, have things changed? So uh, in 10 days, I will receive this absurdly expensive. <laughs> it's $1,500 plus tax. That's why I said it's $1,700. Uh, expensive uh, headset, including Touch Pro controllers. <laughs> But it's got all these cameras, so you don't even need the controllers. You could just go with this, go like blah, 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 with your fingers, blah, 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 and uh, they would see it. It's got uh, it's got cameras on the outside and full color view of the world around you. So even though you're sealed into this headset, on the screens you can see the outside world. So I guess it's maybe more what they call mixed reality. <sighs> And what's interesting at Microsoft at this event this week, Microsoft, well, Microsoft was there, Meta at this event, uh, focused not on gaming, which has up to now been the only real reason anybody would want to do this, but on uh, productivity. In fact, that's Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella shows up in a screen and uh, says, yeah, we're very excited about uh, putting Microsoft Office and Windows on your headset. I just can't imagine a worse way to use Office and Windows, but okay. And then Mark said, hey, good news, we're working on legs. So I don't know if you know this, but the virtual reality world that Meta is proposing, Horizon World, it's out now. Uh, and you can, you can play with it. It's kind of goofy looking. And nobody has legs. They just stop at the waist. And I think that that's because it's hard. Legs are hard to do. Anyway, Mark uh, said, oh, no, we're going to have legs, and then and then danced a jig with his virtual legs, except we now know that was fake. It was done. It was rendered. It was in motion capture. It was fake. So I guess they're not really that close to having legs. Anyway, I'll tell you the truth. I, there's a 30-day return policy, so I'm... I'll try it. I'll let you know. I'll get back to you. Let me get back to you on uh, this virtual reality thing. The other thing uh, uh, this week was uh, Microsoft's Surface event the next day, at which the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, did not show up. What does that tell you? Shows up for somebody else's event, not his own. 
Uh, but nothing to report here except, uh, you know, new Surface tablets and so forth. It's hard to get too excited about them. They're not the not the Windows products I would generally recommend. Uh, Dell, HP, Lenovo all make better products for less money. Um, it, it didn't they didn't wow me. They're pushing uh, Windows on ARM, which is kind of interesting. You know, I think there's a little Apple jealousy here because Apple's got a uh, our new architecture, not Intel, uh, its own Apple Silicon, they call it, the M1 and M2 chips. And they're based on the ARM architecture. <laughs> this sounds very confusing. ARM doesn't make chips. ARM designs chips. And, uh, and funny, because ARM was founded in the early days by Apple and a couple other companies, the Acorn Computer. Uh, Apple sold off its stake many, many moons ago, but they uh, then they come back to ARM, which is interesting. Anyway, so they're making ARM computers, but Apple controls the whole thing, hardware and operating systems, so they can make it all work. Microsoft, not so much. In fact, apparently Microsoft has a deal with Qualcomm, so they can't go to anybody else to make better chips. The chips that they're putting in these, they call Microsoft chips. They're not. They're just Qualcomm chips with Microsoft <laughs> label stamped on them. And uh, it's just not a good experience yet. Okay? Just not a good experience yet. So uh, a couple of things I could, it's hard to get excited about. Now, I did get my Pixel 7 phone. That came in, uh, and I've been playing with it. Man, this camera is good. Very, very good. Uh is it better than Samsung or Apple? You know, that's hard to say. In some cases it is, in some cases it isn't. But, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm if i standing there, as I sometimes am, with a uh, iPhone 14 Pro Max and a Pixel 7 Pro, I might use the Pixel to take a picture. I might. They're really, it's amazing how good all of these high-end cameras are these days. Uh, but the Pixel makes some very nice images. Very nice. I'll show you. you Want to see my slideshow? Oh, it's radio. You can't. <laughs> I could show you my slideshow, but uh, it's radio. Um, I was very, I was very pleased. Uh, you know, the color rendering is good. The white balance is good. The detail is really excellent. And and you know, one of the things camera phones have lacked in the past is. Uh, Really good zoom. That Samsung's fixed that. Apple a little bit, but uh, Google now has a optical 10x zoom, which is good. It's very crisp. Works quite well, I think. So, um, you know, I mean, that's what people talk, and they have macro photography, and that's what people talk about. I think mostly with these phones. Although Google has, and I haven't had a chance to try it, but they have said that they have improved greatly the uh, <laughs> the um, Phone quality, the sound quality on the phone. So I'll have to make some phone calls and see. But I'm, you know, it's not, it's good. It's nice. I don't, uh, I don't disrecommend it. <laughs> I recommend it. It's, uh, if you're Android, this is probably the Android phone to get, which is too bad because Samsung way outsells Google. But I, I think, I think Google has, last year's uh, Pixel 6 had some issues. People complained about the fingerprint being slow this one they've clearly solved that plus it's added a face recognition so you kind of and i noticed by the way uh it's kind of you know i just I, I do both they're both there which i like i wish apple would do both but a lot of times i'll just uh, raise the phone and it sees me and it goes okay you don't have to you don't have to press your fingerprint today so they're all good samsung google uh apple google phone starts uh the pixel Seven at uh, six ninety nine, and then the Pixel Seven Pro at eight ninety nine, which is actually a really good price for a phone that I think is as good as the thousand dollar Samsung and Apple phones. If you want a folding phone, you're going to have to go to Samsung. But uh, if if you can live without a folding phone, I think folding phones are maybe a little over over uh, promoted, shall we say? Shall we shall we say that? Yes, let's say that. You may have noticed I'm alone, the tech guy, all alone. It's just the tech guy. No, guys, Micah has the week off. But he's going to make up for it next week because I'm going to Vegas to see Katy Perry, my wife and I. So I won't be here next week. Uh, but Micah will be uh, doing the show for me. So it works out. It works out beautifully. I am here today, though. If you have questions, comments, suggestions, if you want to talk tech, 8888-ASK-LEO. 
888-827-5536. Kim's standing by for your calls. A couple of lines still open. Uh, website, techguylabs.com. We'll talk tech right after this. Hawump, hawump, he dump a digital dump. Bottom, pop, 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 October, November, pop, 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 Awesome. Is that it? Yeah. Green and white with a red dragon? Of just watching your dollars no. No, I figured it, uh, it was the Iranian flag. Oh, the Iranian flag. Iranian, Iranian. You say tomato. And and are they they're waving this flag across the street? Yes, it's a, there's a mall, a big plaza in a mall across the street. That's not a dragon, that's a lion. It's, I said it was a lion. Oh, you said it was a lion. You didn't mention the curved sword and the sunburst. I, I didn't get that part. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was quick. It was quick. And what were they protesting? Oh, I know what they're protesting. Why should it? The wearing of the hajib. Yeah, I wouldn't say the, I, they were protesting. It's more of just... This is solidarity with the women of Iran who are tired of being suppressed. And I don't blame them. One cotton pick and bit. Nope. 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 I like that line, though. It looked really cool. A U.S. based LifeLock restoration specialist it is cool. dedicated to your case and work to It isn't their normal no flag, it's their variant. Or monitor all this is the normal. We have a variant. We have a variant. It's got a thin blue line across it. Now, here is a long letter from Gary. Hi, Gary. Thank you. USA Automobile Racing History, the Ford Chevy Challenge. Oh, this must be the, the uh, galley of his book. Auto, Library of Auto Racing Memorabilia. Ed Iskandarian, Hot Rod Industry Pioneer. The cam father. He's the father of the cam, I guess. Oh, look at that. That's cool. A personal car of distinction. The Thunderbird. It's got a horse. Many horses. One horsepower. A new non... New what? High-spirited personal car that's home on the boulevard or open road. <laughs> Door top to tread is only 34 inches, yet there is a full 5.9 inch road clearance. No matter where you go, you'll find every trip presents a new kind of driving fun. Designed for road-hugging stability. And high performance. Well, thank you, Gary. Thank you. He also does... Did we talk to him? He does uh, boat management services. I think we talked to him. Costa Mesa there. I feel like we talked to him on the radio. He also sent me a CD. 1956 to 1970. Ford at the races. Oh, cool. And a screensaver. Nice. Nice. Hey! It's a miracle! Females are strong as heck. It's back. <laughs> <laughs> the original Kim Schaffer theme, the unbreakable Kimmy Schaffer. Kimmy, don't take no Schaffer. Hello, Kim. Hi. How you doing? I am well. I just wanted to, was looking at this nice package about uh, Ford... Versus Chevy Racing, sent to me by Gary in Costa Mesa, who I think 
correct me if I'm wrong, has called us. You know, there have been thousands of years. Many years for Costa Mesa. <laughs> he says, I'm the one who called a few months ago oh, okay. and said that I would send my photos of Southeast Asia taken when in the Navy. I remember that. Okay. He says, I will as soon as I can see them one more time. <laughs> well, don't send me your only copies. Yeah, Gary. digitize those. <laughs> don't send me your, that would be sad. But this is a collection of auto memorabilia. And you know who else would be interested in this? The car guy. Yeah, Samable Salmon. Thank you, Gary. I just want to thank him. Don't, I don't want to solicit people sending me things <laughs> because I, I'm running out of room. Yes, you are. <laughs> I am really running out of room. I you don't have that 10,000 square feet underneath anymore. used to have that big studio. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, not anymore. Not and, anymore. Uh, and space is at a premium. Because we only have what eight thousand feet now. I don't know. It's not as not. We don't have a basement. That's no what basement. we're missing. But and also now I am getting. So many years ago in nineteen ninety five and six, I did a show called The Site with Soledad O'Brien on MSNBC. It was with the launch of MSNBC. We we did this show, and uh, the producer of of that show. Uh, hello, Mister Producer. <laughs> I don't know if he wants his name announced or not. I. I, uh, anyway, uh, hi David. I could say David. There's not that many Davids in the world. Hi David. He uh, he has the old sign from the set, which is like 12 feet by 8 feet and weighs 180 pounds. And we're going to go up on Wednesday and get it. And then now I have to figure out where to put that. Oh, okay. <laughs> no more wall space. <laughs> I'm running out of. I don't know why. I'm a, so don't send me anything anymore. No more stuff. You know, I always think about this. We talk all the time about getting our photos, you know, online and saving them. And uh, you're the first generation that will have your entire life history available to your uh, progeny, your your descendants online. Do you think they're going to be interested in that or they're just going to go, I yeah? I hope so, but um, <laughs> it doesn't matter for me because I got nobody. You got no <laughs> progeny. You got nieces and nephews. Yes, plenty of those. They're pr well, no, cousins, but not nieces cousins, and nephews. Well, one of these yeah. days, somebody will have a kid. Somebody, yeah. I have kids, and I know they don't want any of this stuff. <laughs> hey, Henry, I'm going to send you my big sign from a show Daddy did before you were born. No, I guess he was about three when I did it. I'm going to send you this sign. He's going to say, I don't want this. This doesn't work with my TikTok career. <laughs> Who should I, I, I... Do you even have any time... Me? Oh, yes? Okay. Um, all, full yeah, we got tons full of time. Full disclosure. This you is think a I'm just so garrulous <laughs> that I use up all the time, but no. Well, it was a chatty segment. It was a chatty segment. <laughs> um, this is my friend Marissa in Petaluma. who a friend I can't, of yours? I can't fix her problem, so I told her to call you. Wow. That's moving them right to the front of the line, isn't it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Hi, Marissa. Hi there. I hope I can help you. I'll feel terrible if I can't. What's the, what's the, what's going on? Well, I have a MacBook Air. It's about a year and a half old. And I had a very helpful tech friend of mine set it up for me. Um, that's what he actually does for a living is tech as well. And now I have completely locked myself out of the MacBook <laughs> Air and I can't use it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I shouldn't laugh. So... Uh, it's funny. In the, it's not funny. It's a very nice, brand new laptop. Uh, when you before your friend came along and I'm going to put this in air quotes, helped you. Uh, huh. Did you have to log in with a password, or you just open it up, turn it on, and there you'd be? Um, I honestly don't remember because yeah. I haven't actually been able to use this thing in months. Okay, I just kind of yeah. I'm so one of those people that. I'm, I can't do tech at all. So yeah, that's fine. I, I that, think, I so normally on most computers these days, you have to uh, log in to use it. But it's possible when you yeah. set it up to set it up so that, no, 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 I don't have a password, so you just hit return. But I think either he decided you needed one or changed a setting or something, or maybe in just, you know, after every once in a while, Apple, even if you don't have a password, will really want you to verify. So... I think this is the login to get into your MacBook so that you can use it. Otherwise, it's just sitting there with a picture of you or an owl or a beach ball or whatever you've got. And, and it's saying, no, that's no, you're locked out. 
So keep. Well, I'm pretty sure last pass was involved somehow. No, 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 no. You can't get into the computer at all, right? Yeah, no, I can't. I can yeah. open it up and I see my photo, and it says your account is locked. Yeah. So that has nothing to do with LastPass. It's not even running yet. Nothing's running. Just Mac OS. So what you have to do is uh, keep trying, and eventually uh, Apple will say, oh, do you, now here's the question. This is going to be important. You have an Apple ID. Do you remember that? It's going to be something like Marissa at iCloud.com. Do you, do, you, do you remember that at all? Does that ring a bell? No. Does it? Do you have it? <laughs> I just don't so you know. can recover, you can reset your MacBook password as long as you have an Apple ID. Okay. Because what it'll then know. say is uh, if you forgot your password, you can reset it using your Apple ID. And that's the, so keep, <laughs> what you can do is like keep trying to log in supposedly after three times it'll say this but if it doesn't keep trying until you see hey i think you forgot your password it does it to me all the time we're way past that point it asked me for my password several times yeah and now it doesn't even ask me for my password it just says your account is locked and i can't double click anything i can't click well, anything force it off you know how to do that you press and hold the uh, fingerprint reader until it goes off and turn it on again and see uh -huh. see if you can get it to that point where it's saying if you forgot. Then... I don't know. Huh? What don't you know? Okay, I'm, I'm a fingerprint reader. I don't know what that is. Up in the upper hand, right-hand corner of the, the computer, there's a blank button. That's, yep. that's yeah, press and hold it until the screen goes dark and the okay, keyboard turns done. off and everything. Now press it again and it'll go, bong, and it'll wake up. And I'm hoping... <laughs> It, it will not give you this annoying message uh, that you can't do anything. It will give you a chance to, if you forgot your password, you can reset it. Okay. Well, I hope that is the case because I feel like I've turned this computer off multiple times. Okay. To do so that. if that doesn't work, then you can go to forgot.apple.com on another computer okay. or on your iPhone or okay. whatever else you got. So it is asking for a password. Yay. If the password is required. Yeah. Um, but I don't know the password. I understand. So. Enter the enter. <laughs> Oop de doop de la 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 three times. Doesn't matter what you enter. Just something. Okay. And, and then it's going to say, hey, I think you forgot your password. Duh. And then it says you can reset it using your Apple ID and then click the OK button. Either that, and if that doesn't happen, go to just go on the web and some other computer to forgot that get get Kim to go to this for you. Forgot that Apple dot com. But I got to tell you, you have to find your Apple ID. You got to log in with your Apple ID, which is going to be an email address, usually ending at Outlook. Uh, not Outlook. Uh, sorry, did I say Outlook? iCloud dot com, uh, or sometimes it's me dot com. Depends how old it is, or. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I think I'm definitely going to have to do that because I tried to put in a password and it just says your account is locked. Yeah, so you're going to go to forgot.apple.com, but I you have to remember your Apple ID. That's the only catch on that. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So, uh, hold on, because I will continue to help you. So um, that's uh, interesting. So it is possible. I mean, you can't set up. You can set up a Mac without an Apple ID. Uh, unusual to do so, but if you have, then you've got another issue entirely. That's why I was asking uh, if you had a password. You can't erase the computer and start over again. Yeah, that's what Kim had said. Yeah. Um, try this, okay? Uh, so there is a um, recovery utility that will come up. You turn off the computer again, like I told you. Just hold the fingerprint reader down until it goes completely dark. Then hold Command-R and turn it on. This is going to go into recovery mode. Okay, let's see. All right, so the screen is black. Now hold the command R while just keep holding it till you see the uh, apple. Yep. And now you can release it. And you're going to go into a recovery window. And there should be a forgot all passwords link. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all my passwords.
When I open it up, it just says Marissa Patrick, enter password. Yeah. That's normal. But you don't know that password is the problem. Correct. So uh, that's normal. Uh, from now on, <laughs> and don't put it in LastPass because LastPass doesn't run until you get booted up. Put it on, write it on a piece of paper somewhere. Stick it in a drawer. You need a password. Okay. So when you set it up, and this is going to, when you forget all passwords, you're going to go through all this stuff. And uh, I don't think it's going to erase the drive. Is there stuff on the drive you do not want to lose? I honestly don't even know anymore. <laughs> okay. And it just so that's probably not. Hard. Yeah, you have, I forgot, you have a more modern Mac. So just press and hold the power button until it goes off, and then press and hold it until loading startup options appear. Yeah, it's a different method for the silicon. I forgot. Okay, so I hit Command-R again or no? No. So you turn it all the way off, turn yep. it. Turn it on and keep, don't let go of the on-off button, the fingerprint. Just keep holding it. Okay. And it will uh, just keep holding it until you get recovery options. Oh, so the guy who set it up for you may not have done this. Oh. Apple could have just for some reason decided, we're going to make her log in. Um, at some point, you probably had this and you and you... You set it up with a password, but you've forgotten that. I would try, by the way, I would try, you know, you probably use the same password over and over again, right? I do. Um, okay, so it says Macintosh HD or options. I can't remember what it's going to look like now. Uh, oh, let me see. I guess options, yeah. And then it should say select a user you know the password for. <laughs> but you don't know any of them. So there should be underneath that a button that says. Mac uh, OS recovery, examining volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, oh, yeah, there it is. Select an admin user you know the password for, or it says forgot all passwords. Bingo. Okay, select a Wi-Fi network from the menu. or I have to run because I got to do uh, uh, another Sorry. segment, but... I think you're there. Okay. Thank you. Have a good time. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, Marissa, just uh, tell Kim and I'll help you with it. We'll get it working. Okay. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Take care. Hello, Scott. Leo. Oh, here we go. Uh, we're going to get him out of the hip bag right now and open up his <laughs> trick bag. It's time for... Mr. Hipster himself, Scott Wilkinson, a home theater geek. Hello, Scotty. Hello, Leo. How you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. What's up nice in the day. in the world of home theater? Oh, I got an I got an email from Thomas, a loyal listener, who had heard me. Oh, I don't know, a month or two ago, talking about TVs in terms of the first tier and the second tier. Huh. Is there so? Oh, oh, he's talking about manufacturers. Manufacturers. Yeah, this is an artificial distinction. The manufacturers. It is an artificial. It. it is. It is yeah. absolutely an artificial distinction. But he called. He wrote me and he said, "You know, I heard you talking about this. And what what are examples of the second tier? Now, this is my own distinction. It used to be the, Vizio was second tier. I don't know though. They get. I, I would. I would still call them second tier. Okay. I would. I would say the first tier is Samsung, Sony. And LG. Those are the flagship brands, the top of the flagship line. The, brand. the top of the, the lines. The Apple, Google, and Samsung of the. Exactly. Of the, yes. Yeah. Yes. And you're going to pay a premium. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> for buying those TVs. Now, you know, you get that is the best you can get. But if you want to save some money, you go to the second tier. And the point I really wanted to make here is that the difference is not really great it's not big you There's... better say that because i always buy my mom tcls and i exactly. bought my wife a vizio yeah and you better say they're almost <laughs> as good oh they are <laughs> I, I absolutely Whew. believe that without question God, thank goodness uh, so he asked me what are the second tier brands and i would say they are vizio tcl and hisense yes 
And this changes, though, because brands become better and worse and so forth and so on. For it's instance, true. It's you true. wouldn't have put Hisense and TCL in that second tier uh, five years ago. Probably. Maybe five years ago. That yeah. may be true. Yeah, yeah, that may very well be true. Yeah. But they have come up big time. They certainly have. And In fact, uh, one reason I wanted to talk about this today is that TCL just announced an 85-inch mini LED backlight uh, TV for under $2,000. <laughs> under $2,000. Is that a good price? Well, it, for the 6 series. Uh, this is their this is their hot, top of almost top of the line series. You know, all TV manufacturers have series. They have, you know, the flagship series and then the step down and the step down from that and so on and so on. And the 6 series is the TCL flagship. I think they have an 8 series, but I, mostly I recommend the 6 series. And so this is in the 6 series. They've had an 8 85 inch TV before, but it's in been in the lower series. So this is the first time it's been in their premier or near the, near the top of their line and under $2000 for an 85 inch 85 TV. 85 is huge. And and it's is mini huge. LED good? Is that a good thing? It's, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's really good. Cuz is that full it, array local dimming watch me use yes, the big words. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So you've got thousands of LEDs behind the screen of the LCD TV. And I believe this one has 448 local dimming zones. So each of these zones can brighten or dim independently. And so if you have an image with some dark parts and some bright parts, then the dark parts can be really dark and the bright parts can be really bright. So when Sauron is walking into Mount Doom's fires. Exactly, exactly. He's very dark, but Mount Doom is very bright, and you will Correct. see the contrast. Right, right. It improves the contrast. Is it HDR? And can it do HDR? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, it can do all the HDR formats. HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, Dolby Vision, and HLG. So you have no problem with any of the formats, no matter what the content is that you're watching. They call that high dynamic range when you have high dynamic range, Sauron which means and Mount Doom on the same screen. There's a very big range very between the darkest and the brightest. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Exactly right. And w as long as you have content that was encoded in that high dynamic range, which a lot of streaming content nowadays, has been. Yeah. Nowadays, a lot has been. Uh, you will see it and it looks great. It's by far more impressive to see a high dynamic range content than it is to see more pixels. And these are QLED quantum dot nano crystals. They, correct. They have, they have quantum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most. Is most that a good of, thing? <laughs> it's a very good thing. It's okay. a very good thing. It means you've got a wide color gamut. You have a wide so, range of colors. It sounds like we got a tier one TV coming from a tier two manufacturer. I think so. I think so. I, it, it could very well be. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. It was only announced on Monday. I haven't seen any reviews of it yet either. So I'm very uh, tempted because, we'll you know, I have a 100-inch projector, but this is close yeah. to that size, and it's not exactly. projector. It's direct view. Exactly. Exactly. Which means it would be brighter, brighter and much brighter. more vivid. Yeah. Yep. 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 Exactly. But it's not right. OLED. It's QLED. It's QLED, Which is not yeah. quite OLED. No, correct. It's still an LCD TV. All this alphabet soup is very confusing. Well, I yeah, understand. because there's the quantum dot OLED too, right? Right, the QD OLED. <laughs> <laughs> QD OLED is better than quantum dot it's the best. LED. Yes, correct. It's the best there is so far. Uh, in fact, my next TV will probably be a QD OLED. Now, they're, those top out size-wise at 65 inches. Yeah, they're much more expensive. And they're much more expensive because yeah. it's a brand new technology. New technology is always expensive at first. You want an old projector? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I didn't ask one important thing. Oh, wait, no, yeah. you said it's under 2000 it's under two thousand that's not, dollars. That's, I mean, that sounds like a lot. I understand, kids, but it's you know, eighty-five that's not chunk inches. Change, but yeah, it's a really big screen. Yeah, really big. TCL says if you sit six feet away from it, it'll be the same sixty-degree field of view that you get at the TCL IMAX theater in Hollywood. Now, sixty-degree field of view is too much, in my opinion. 
I think that's too wide. You Will there be handprints in the cement of your house? <laughs> that's an in-joke, I think. Uh, yeah, well, anybody who's been to the to the TCO. It used to be the Grauman Chinese Grauman's Theater where they Chinese. did the fingerprints yeah, in the yeah. cement. Yeah. yeah, and there still are. I mean, if you go to Hollywood and you go to the Chinese well, they're not going to tear up the sidewalk just because it's now no. the TCL. No, no, that's a that's an iconic place. Right. I mean, people are drawn there. You have to walk past all the actors playing, you know, uh, Captain Jack Sparrow and Spider Man. I don't call those people the... actors. <laughs> <laughs> Wannabe actors. Wannabes. Okay, all right. Oh, uh, you like a picture with me, young lady? <laughs> It's uh, hilarious. It maybe, if anybody ever gets to Hollywood and walks down Hollywood Boulevard, that's oh, yeah. really funny because every where all, 10 feet, there's one of these people playing a Wonder Woman or yeah. a Captain Jack Sparrow or something. It's hilarious. It's like Times Square. That's where all the former radio hosts go. So uh, <laughs> look for me. I'm trying to decide, right. should I be Elmo or Captain Jack? I, I can't decide. There was, a, there was a story. I saw a story once where SpongeBob SquarePants got in a fight with Superman. On well, who would Boulevard. win in that fight? I ask you. <laughs> of course, if you punch a sponge, it doesn't. It kind of no, no, nothing happens. Nothing happens. That's right. Anyway, TCL six series, TCL. eighty-five inches, nineteen ninety-nine at Best Buy, and yep. I presume elsewhere. It yep. has all the Dolby's, all the high, all the <laughs> HDR formats. Um, it's a Ro it's got a Roku smart TV platform. If you care about that, isn't so? There's two parts of a TV that make it good or bad. I think. You tell me if I'm wrong, but this is what I glean from listening to you. One is yeah. the panel itself, and yeah. there are only a few manufacturers. So Correct. It, the panel, uh, and then the other thing is the software, the chips that are yes. doing the upscaling the and the rendering and the processing. Do yep, you, exactly Do you right. think this is a good panel and good chips? We don't know yes. yet. You well, did. We don't know yet. We haven't, we haven't. But the other six series, the smaller six series that I have seen, are remarkable. TCL really, is really good. Is is a second tier manufacturer on its way, on its way to first tier. To first I think tier. Scott yeah. Wilkinson watches videos youtubecom slash forum and hear him right here every week. I'm really tempted because well, 85. It's not quite a hundred. It's, it's more. It's less than a. You think? I mean, it's not. It's smaller than you. I'll have to get a measuring tape or something and. See, because it's not like it's, oh, it's only 15% smaller. That's not. Well, I'd have to do the math on that. Yeah. I don't have a calculator it's here. A, but it's, a, it's a lot smaller, I think. Well, I, I wouldn't say a lot. I would say somewhat. Somewhat? Um, I mean, you'd have to just do the area right. and, and see what the difference is. And I don't have a calculator handy, so I'm not, and that's not something I like. To I could do, do that in my head, but I won't. Go for it, I man. don't want to show off. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> I mean, 85 inches is a pretty damn big TV. <laughs> so the hypotenuse of the triangle is 85. Correct. Because it's a, it's a, but it's not equilateral. It's a right triangle. No, it's a 16 by nine. Yeah. So, so 16 um, by nine, but so this four by the square of the, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll let you do your segment right now. All right, no a, problem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Equals C squared, correct. Thank you, so, sir. So 85 squared equals uh, uh, width squared plus height, height squared. squared. And the ratio of width to height is 1.78. Right. So that's enough information to calculate it. And I'll leave it to the chat room because they love yes, math let, problems. Let us leave it to the reader, <laughs> the listener. They love math problems, but I yes. bet you it's it's not fifteen percent smaller, but it's more like twenty five percent fewer. Uh, well, square now inches, you've got but me I don't curious. know. I I'm gonna have to I, do the calculation. I, don't know. It, I might do that in the next segment while while you're on the radio and and come back at the top of the hour and have that information for you. Because uh, now I'm curious. Yeah. Now I want to know how how yeah. much smaller is it in area? And that's the important. That's thing, what's important. Area. Yeah, you Correct. don't look at the diagonal and say, "Well, the diagonal's fifteen percent smaller." That's not the uh, that's not the issue, right? Or it's is scary. it? I don't know. That'll be interesting. We may, but find we'll find out. out. We'll find we'll out. Actually, yeah. find out. Yeah. Meanwhile, um, I'll say hi to the chat room. Beatmaster said my last podcast was very informative uh, and fun, which it was. We talked all about Cedia, and uh, we had some good people on. Mike Heiss is always a hoot. 
Love Mike. Yeah. Mike is great. He, yeah. I, he I will have him on the show anytime because he's really fun and very knowledgeable. Is he in the chat room today? He doesn't Let's seem see. to be today. He usually I is. Yeah, he usually is. Yeah. But I don't see him. He's taking a day off. I oh. like like Micah. Yeah, maybe he and Micah are up to something. <laughs> um, yes, Beatmaster. Mike took your jokes in good fun. Absolutely. No question about it. Um, East Coast says, uh, TCL versus Hisense, which would you buy? Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, they're both they're both very very good. I I'm more familiar with TCL, which is why I'd probably buy TCL uh, over Hisense. But Hisense, you know, is making some great TVs. They make a TV that uh, that uh, TCL does not, which is uh, what's called dual modulation. So they have two layers of LCD panel, and the sec one layer makes the picture. And the second layer modulates the light going through the first layer. So that allows for deeper blacks, greater contrast. Uh, in fact, I, when I wrote to Thomas about this first tier, second tier business, um, I said, uh, with TCL, stick with the six series or higher, which means the six or eight series. Um, the five series also has full array local dimming. So you, I would consider that if money were super tight, but the number of zones is very low. In the Hisense lineup, I would stick with the uh, U6G or higher. Stick around for the top. You betcha. Thank you, sir. It's time to talk about the great Zip Recruiter, my fine sponsor for this particular portion of the Tech Guy program. Uh, when we do hiring, uh, we, I would say for the last five, six years, always use Zip Recruiter because Zip Recruiter works best. <laughs> you can go to Zip Recruiter, post your job for free, post it to everywhere. I mean, that's one of the nice things about Zip Recruiter. One post on Zip Recruiter goes to 100 plus job boards and social networks. It casts a very broad net. And then Zip Recruiter does something really cool. It looks through all of its million plus current resumes. That's how many people use Zip Recruiter. And looks for people whose qualifications match your job listing. Now, it doesn't go to them and say, come on, we got a job for you. It goes to you and says, hey, look what I found. I found some good candidates. You look at them and you decide who you want to invite. But I have to tell you, and this has been our experience, when you invite somebody to apply for a job, they are so flattered. They are so excited that they follow through. There's been a big problem lately. If you've tried been trying to do hiring, it's hard to hire nowadays. People don't show up for the interview. They blow you off. Not if you invite them. It really works. ZipRecruiter is great, too, because even though you're casting this wide net, you don't get a million calls to your voicemail. You don't get a, a bunch of emails in your inbox. It all goes into the ZipRecruiter interface where it's formatted, it's processed, all the resumes look the same, so it's very easy to scan through them. You can have screening questions. So you can eliminate people that just don't match your needs right away. It's so effective. That's what we use uh, to hire engineers, to hire editors, producers, continuity department people. We've hired a number of great people from ZipRecruiter. It's important to hire the right people for your uh, business because those people are what makes your business. So whether you're hiring for a podcast network or a growing business, ZipRecruiter can help. Four out of five people, who, employers who post on ZipRecruiter, get a quality candidate within the first day. I have to tell you, our experience is usually within the first hour. It's pretty cool. So if you uh, if you like this show, you're a tech guy fan, and you want to do some hiring, please do me a favor. Try ZipRecruiter free right now. Use our special address, though, so they know you saw it here. ZipRecruiter.com slash tech guy. ZipRecruiter dot com slash t e c h g u y it's the smartest way to hire we know because that's what we use ziprecruiter.com slash tech guy thank you zip recruiter for supporting the tech guy show leo laporte the tech guy episode 1935 can you believe that 1935 episodes and all of them are there at the website techguylabs.com uh Almost all of them have, I think all of them have audio. We didn't start doing video for the first couple of years. So there'll be video starting, I think, in year three or four. And uh, the show notes will include links to everything we talk about, like that 
Fine TV that uh, Scott was talking about, and uh, eventually transcripts, audio, and video from the show. So that's all there for free. No sign up. TechGuyLabs.com. Dan on the line from Spotswood, New Jersey. Hello, Dan. Hello, Leo. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Good. I have a question. I just got a, bought a new laptop, and I'm debating whether I should put Windows, Microsoft Office, or LibreOffice on it. Oh. So Libre, the nice thing about LibreOffice, which does run on Windows as well as Linux and Mac, is it's free. Uh, it will read and write most Microsoft Office formats. Uh, but not as well as when you know Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel or, and and I think that uh, it really kind of depends. I would you know what start with the free one and see if it does the job for you. It they're they're really attempting to make it look as close as possible to uh, Microsoft's Office. By the way, which is now called unaccountably Microsoft 365. So don't worry, I'm going to continue to call it Office because that's just confusing. Uh, it, you know, that's kind of that's a personal choice. Um, the good news is, if you get Office nowadays, you're buying the subscription. You're not going to. I remember going to the store and seeing this, how much a box set of Office discs cost. It was hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I was like, I was, I was kind of stunned. But but I pay eight dollars a month for uh the personal edition and that's everything i need it's the full office and so forth so it's just a lot it's just a lot um i would say try libre office it's the formerly open office open office is still around it's open source which means anybody can take it and make a new version which they did and made libre office and i think libre office has frankly probably the best at this point it's pretty good now the the you know the one thing you won't get that you get with Microsoft 365 is a terabyte of OneDrive storage. So if you use OneDrive, that might make it a decent deal at eight bucks a month for the personal. I don't use that. Yep. Uh, the other thing that makes it a good deal is you can all install it on multiple PCs. Again, most normal humans don't care about that. Uh, I would say Libre should be fine. Use it for a while. See if any showstoppers crop up and if they don't keep doing it it's really it's kind of a, a perfect example of how open source is pretty amazing microsoft does not make the office file formats public so in order to make LibreOffice and before it open office they had to figure it out they had to back kind of backwards uh, engineer it reverse engineer it some of the things Microsoft tells you but they do weird things in the office format for instance you would think that the text in your file is stored as text a b c d e f g but no microsoft didn't want to do that because each letter takes up 16 bits of or is it 32 now with unicode it takes up a lot of bits of data so they use a weird data encoding format which is why if you've ever tried it you've opened up your office files to see if you can read them unlike many other word processors there's no text it's just gobbledygook so uh, the other option it is not necessarily LibreOffice, uh, is just using the web-based versions. Remember, Microsoft makes a web-based version of Office available for free at office.com. Google has, you know, Google's not, Office isn't pretty. You know, Google Docs, Google Sheets. It's not pretty. Uh, if you're an Excel wizard, it doesn't have all the, fancy features of excel pivot tables and things like that most people never use that stuff you know if you're a financial analyst you're going to use excel i mean that's just you're going to use it but your company's going to pay for it so you don't care uh but if you're a home user or you know in our office we use google uh, docs you know we pay for the google workspace but you can use it as a home user for free and that's pretty good there's also other online office solutions like zoho office they have a free tier but you end up probably paying for that so i would i would look at these other ones as well i think you know this is a very competitive area google announced this week that they're going to really add to the features of google workspace and google docs including some interesting features that microsoft is just starting to add in office so it's a it's a battle it's a it's an interesting battle google would love to take away your microsoft 
uh, dollars. I think I think you've got some good choices. I guess that's the the bottom line. Julian, is this Julian Vargas in Los Angeles? It sure is. Hey, TechJV.com. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I finally learned your URL. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate all the wonderful people that you've sent to me. I talked to that caller from recently, Last Lionel. Last week, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think I think I gave him some good information. Good. So I appreciate uh, you looking out. Julian's a blind user, and he helps blind users at his website, techjv.com. His email and a, and a phone number are also there. He's very generous with his time, I think. I, I'm, I'm waiting for the day you call me and say, can you not send any more people my way? <laughs> I'm done. Well, you know what? Because every, every so often, one of those people turns into a client. So that's there you go. a bad thing. And you know what? It's all about helping the community. We are all brothers and sisters in this, and we all need to help each other out. I completely agree. And, and you do a much better job than I ever could. I, I often say this, that uh, you can ask me about accessibility products, but unless I use them and I have to use them, I'm not going to really know what it's like to use them as somebody who needs them. You know, I could put on a blindfold and try to use them, but that's not the same experience. Uh, yes, but to your credit... To your credit, you don't shy away from it, and you welcome input from people who know about it. So yeah. that's what makes you stand out. Well, one of the things about being on the radio, we have a lot of blind blind listeners, right? Because we're radio. There's no pictures. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, what can I do for you to do to, to do today? So I'm doing something today. a little out of character for me. I, I'm normally sort of a go-along-to-get-along kind of person, but occasionally when something happens that needs to be called out, I do it. And I'm trying to call attention to something that's going on here in Los Angeles County, what I feel is discrimination against disabled riders of a form of public transit known as paratransit, which is... My mother-in-law is going to use our local paratransit uh, now because she's uh, got rheumatoid arthritis, can barely walk. And so it's a, it's a great, like three bucks, take her to her doctors, take her uh, to friends, take her to church. I think it's a great thing. So what's going on with paratransit in L.A.? So basically, even though they are a form of public transit, uh, they are refusing to follow the direct the directive of the county health director in making it an optional but strongly recommend wear mask wearing. Ah, uh, insist that we do this. It's so become it's so difficult. politicized. It's really a shame. It's really a it shame. Is. And. And I try to steer away from that because everybody who I talk to right away goes into the, the merits or, or, or anti -mask. Oh, believe me, I will get now a uh, hundred emails from people who say, I have proof that masks don't work. There are people who think it gives you, they give you COVID. Uh, yeah, I know. To save, your, save your ink, kids. <laughs> but the point, is, the point is this. If this is about equal treatment of people with disabilities. Everybody else who rides public transit in Los Angeles County is trusted to make that best decision for their health and safety and it's only strongly recommended instead of required yeah. riders of access services in los angeles county are not given that and in fact if we decline we are threatened to not be transported thus potentially leaving us stranded and denying us of our ada civil rights so i'm trying to call attention to this i've gone on facebook i've taken a few videos to, to document instances of this I've tried to get people, especially the blindness and other disabled organizations, motivated to, to condemn this. This is what we call in the National Federation of the Blind, uh, Blind Equality Achievement Month. And clearly there's inequality going on, yet nobody wants to speak out against it. Though. Is there a, a email or a website people could go to or just step up and... Just contact me or look for my videos on Facebook. I made them... TechJV.com. He'll talk all about it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So I'm, I'm unclear, Julian. Are you saying you don't want people to have to wear masks? I want people to have the ability to make the choice just like able-bodied so, riders. So, so, so didn't they do that? L.A. County ends mask order on public transit. Oh, but they haven't done it on paratransit. I see what you're saying. Services is choosing to ignore our pleas and still enforce this on us. I see. And if we don't, they threaten to not transport us. So I'm trying what I What's the problem with wearing the mask, Julian? Well, a few things. Number one, as a blind person, it changes the way everything sounds and it causes disorientation and causes unsafe travel. Also, sometimes they take you on these long, circuitous routes. You're in that vehicle sometimes two or three hours, and yeah. it's uncomfortable when it's hot to have to wear this on my face. But the point is, I don't want people to not be allowed to wear masks. I just want to be able to you make want the, the choice. decision yeah. 
yeah. that everybody else gets to make on public transit. That's really what this is about for me. I think people are going to actually regret uh, the lifting of mask mandates very soon because there is a new uh, immunity evading, unfortunately, variant. Two two of them coming uh, just around the corner. About they say about ten percent of all the uh, all the U.S. COVID cases are now. What is this new variant, Doctor Mom? Is it? Uh, I, I try to remember the designation but i think we are going to actually in about a month in fact go out and get your booster because in about a month uh it's gonna it's gonna sweep america and apparently it evades immunity which is not a good thing scott hello leo your turn i'm gonna go get a cup of coffee go get a cup of coffee yes sir uh by the way i did do the math thank you and 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 the difference in area between an 85 inch and 100 inch yeah. is 38%. See, I told you. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a big difference. <clears throat> and the difference in, in diagonal is, is only 18%. It is nine. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it continues on the other side. So there you go. John has actually given me a extensive explanation of how all of this... <laughs> <laughs> works but uh, you uh, you figured it out right i did when i see stuff like this i just glaze over i go I, I, yeah okay but it's not that complicated well you know i i my first college degree is in physics oh well there you go i have some you're used to greek letters in your i'm used to greek in your letters soup. indeed <laughs> <laughs> okay see but that is a lot 38 percent is a huge amount right it's that's a, a significant a amount yeah, yeah it's a significant amount yeah. that's right and of course you would Absolutely. see it I just don't want to buy it and get it home and then go, oh, this is 38% I wish it smaller. were bigger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and as I always say, no, no matter what size TV you have, you can get it to fill your just field of view. sit close. Sit we close. sit pretty far away in the living room. That's the real mm -hmm. issue. We're maybe like 12 or 13 feet away. So, Right. All right. All yours. Anyway, thank you. Hello, everybody. So nice to see you all. Um, Dr. Mom, Grandma, good to see you. Would you still go with a separate streaming box, Roku or whatever, um, or rely on the built-in ones in the TV? I would go for a separate streaming box. Uh, now, the TV ones, you can download apps and, and so on these days. That, that's, that's not so much of a problem. Um, but they the, the interface is often different between the TV app and the separate box app and the separate box app. Well, for one thing, if you use the internal TV one, then you have to connect it to the internet. And if it has a camera on it, then it might very well be monitoring you. And, uh, you know, that's kind of paranoid, but maybe it's true. I don't really know. Um, separate streaming boxes are cheap. You know, they're a hundred bucks, less than a hundred bucks, maybe 50 bucks. Uh, so uh, it just, it just feels better to me. That's all. Uh, UJ, uh, what's the uh, peak brightness of the 85 inch? I don't know. Uh, the article I read about it that had the best information was in, um, HD guru. Um, and they had some good information about it. Uh, 448 zones, uh, and so on and so on. But I don't think they mentioned what the peak brightness was. I suppose I could go to TCL themselves and see what they say. Um, but I will stay with you guys instead for now. Phoenix Warp 1, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. He, Phoenix Warp 1 was, was in our audience for the podcast, and I uh, was so glad to see him there. Uh, yeah, we had a great time. We had a great time on that show. Joe says, my TCL 8 series has a flashing white LED that will not turn off unless you connect it to the internet. Oh, no, we were just talking about this. Uh, <clears throat> I had to cover it with electrical tape. That's how much they want to spy on you. See, there you go. Exactly so. Now, I've never heard of this before, that if you don't connect a TV to the internet, it does something annoying. That's, that's pretty bad. That's a negative in my book. Um, so that's, that's a bummer. 
I wonder if the six series does that too. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jamez says, follow up, i.e., can you trust delivery when buying modern large panels? <sighs> That's a very good question. It's one reason why I tend not to buy large TVs from Amazon or, or delivery services. I'd, I'd rather go local and pick it up myself. Now that means in the case of an 85 incher, you better have a, you know, a, a Mercedes, uh, what, what do they call them? The sprinter or the, those really tall vans you sometimes see on the road, um, or a truck or something like that, or borrow one from some, from a friend, uh, that can be a problem too. And then hoisting it around, uh, I'd rather have a delivery company do that for sure. But, but boy, there's so much potential for that's such a big piece of glass and it could so easily get damaged. And of course, if it does, <laughs> they'll deliver Amazon or whoever will deliver it. They'll drop it off. They'll leave. You'll open it up and take it out somehow. And if it's damaged, then you have to call them to come back and you have to pack it back up. You know, it's a buying a big TV is not trivial. I would say, um, Aaron, Aaron clap K K lap. I don't know how you would say that. Uh, the, that, that white flashing light is probably a warning that something's not connected. Yeah, that could be. Um, and I would go into the menu system and see if there's a way to turn it off. There might be, uh, if there's not, there's the old electrical tape solution. Um, but it is annoying. That's for damn sure. I would, I would be really annoyed at that. Um, boy, yikes. I guess it depends on the TV. I, my, uh, high sense every once in a while thing will pop up saying you're not connected, not connected and then it goes internet. away. Yeah. Um, it's got, well, a point this guy's saying, it. but a well, little white light, that's annoying. The blinking constantly. Yeah. That Just put a piece of tape over it. That's what he did. That's exactly what he yeah. did. Yeah. But it's, it's probably depends very much on the, uh, on the TV. <laughs> You know, yeah. some, some yeah. don't, some don't care. Yeah. They right. make, um, uh, Dr. Mom says use color form dots, but they even make dots for, uh, led. I carry them when we travel because, really? yeah. Cause Lisa hates any light in the room. And so I've oh, put night, dots yeah. over leds on various things. Uh, so I carry uh -huh. this little, this little package of do dots intended for covering leds. Wow. And they have different, for that purpose? yeah, they have different opacities so you can have, uh -huh. A darker LED or no LED or light wow. dims. That's it. There you go, Scooter X. Light dims. Light dims. Oh, I'll have to check that out. I I also prefer a, as dark a room as yeah. possible. Me, I like I like it lit up like a Christmas tree. And <laughs> <laughs> my side of the bed, you should. It's everything's blinking. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Scott. My pleasure. Have See a lovely, week. Uh, lovely uh, week and uh, beautiful Santa Cruz. Ah, it's look gray here. I bet it's gray there today. It's gray here yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, which is fine. Marine layer. It. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Leo. Bye. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today, Leo Laporte? The uh, Tech Guy eighty eight eighty eight. Ask Leo. That's the phone number eight 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 two seven five five three six. Toll free from anywhere in the U S. or Canada. Outside that area, you could still call. Uh, don't call collect. We. We won't, we won't accept it. It's toll free. So uh, does anybody actually, that's an interesting question, Kim. Does anybody call collect? <laughs> I do not no. believe I've received Do we ever get, prison. sometimes from prisons, <laughs> I they may go, have got mail from prison, but yeah. I don't think I've got any yeah. phone calls. A prisoner <laughs> wants to uh, call you. Is, will you accept? <laughs> I don't, I think on a toll free number, they probably can't, I would guess. Probably not. But I don't know because there's no charge to reverse. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. Don't, don't, Nobody's don't try Nobody's ever it. admitted to calling from prison. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you say, we get a lot of mail from prison. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Thank you for the expert update. 8888-ASK-LEO. Uh, you can use Skype out or some sort of voice over the internet to call from anywhere in the world. And it should be free because, you know, it's it's a toll-free number. Website, tech, 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 <laughs> techilabs.com. 
TechGuyLabs.com. That's the name of our YouTube uh, page, too. And soon we will be, uh, right now it's YouTube.com slash TechGuyLabs. But soon it will be YouTube.com slash at TechGuyLabs. YouTube's now finally adopting the at nomenclature that Twitter and everybody else, uh, Instagram. Does Facebook use at? I don't know if they do. Could you be at Leo at, at Facebook? I don't have a Facebook account, so I, I don't know. But um, certainly you can on Instagram and Twitter. And soon on uh, YouTube, at Tech Guy Labs. I like it. I like it. Aaron's on the line from Flagstaff, Arizona. Hello, Aaron. Hi, Leo. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Good. Um, so, funny, you actually have another blind caller today. <laughs> Not the first time I've had two in a row. Aww. Aww. Record. <laughs> anyway... So I'm calling because, so I bought a really nice MacBook Pro back in like August and my girlfriend who is not blind has been listening to me talk about how happy I am with it and how awesome it is. And meanwhile, she's been dealing with a crappy Surface Pro 7. Oh. Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> Although Microsoft on Thursday, when they talked about the Surface Pro 9, their new the and the, arm. And the, the Surface arm. laptops and the yeah. arms, they mm -hmm. made this big deal about all these accessibility features. But honestly, Android, iOS, Macintosh, Windows, all these companies really work hard, I think. And, uh, and for the most part, yeah, do a good do. job. Yeah, They do, yeah. yeah. Um, they sometimes have slip-ups, but they, they do. Yeah, Apple had a big slip-up with Siri last year where they took out some features like reading email back that uh, a lot of my blind I listeners heard were, about yeah, that. were very upset I, about. I've never actually, I never actually used those features, but I do know people that were affected. I, d I don't like using Siri. Because, you know, it misunderstands you 80%. She's a, she's a nitwit. <laughs> Let's face yeah, it. <laughs> my wife swears at her and she says, that's not very, Siri says, it's not very nice. And my wife says, you're a robot. You don't have feelings. Stop pretending. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah, so she's she's fine. My girlfriend is finally, like, I'm, I'm making a cave and I think she's, she wants to try a new Mac. The problem is, because I'm blind and she's not, I don't know how to teach her how to use a Mac. Oh. So you want to know where? Yeah. Do you know resources? or like, cause she, She's pretty geeky. She's a technology teacher. So, she, you know, she. It, this isn't her first rodeo, but like... Is there an Apple you know, store near you? Yes, there's an Apple store like two miles away from her. I was thinking of that. Apple has the best classes uh, they have free product workshops, so if you own a laptop, you can go in there, and there's skills classes, there's labs. Um, I would say Apple's the best uh, because it's very Apple-specific. You could go to your local community yeah, college. Yeah. They have computer courses as well. But for the most part, they're going to be about Windows unless you find one that's specifically Apple. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, the thing is like I said, she, she's, a, she's, a, she's a geek. She knows how to use technology. Yeah. I just want her transition to the Mac to be as smooth as possible, so she doesn't return. To I think the the, the the lessons at the retail stores are, are phenomenal. They call them Today at Apple. So if you go to the Flagstaff cool. store, they'll have a schedule for the Today at Apple. They'll have a website uh, page that'll tell you all the things they're doing. They do everything from photography to basic skills. Uh, they know how to do it. They're you know they're really well trained in uh, making it engaging. They're not very long. Uh, they closed it down, of course, during COVID, but they've reopened now. So now that the stores yeah, yeah. are... Yeah, they're all open again. Yeah. There's also, yeah. um, if and and this was created during COVID, and I I don't know if it's still around, but I think they had an online version of this, was today at Apple at Home, uh, which is a double at. Look which, at that. <laughs> look at that. So, yeah, Apple, so yeah. today at Apple at Home. So she could also do it via FaceTime if, I, I presume they use FaceTime. It would be funny if they didn't. But uh, yeah. but they have classes. What's nice, in fact, this is the thing I would suggest to her, is instead of saying, I'm going to learn the whole ecosystem, pick a, pick a program that she uses a lot that she likes and focus on that. If they have a class on that, Photoshop or um, uh, Microsoft Word or Pages, something that she uses. Because honestly, my experience has been if you can get uh, some, some real facility at one program instead of having this giant universe just pick a narrower s slot like a, a single program and by getting skill in that program actually all of that translates you'll get more comfortable more confident and i think it, it's the best way rather than saying i'm going to learn the whole thing 
but they do have that's, skills that's classes. A good idea. Yeah, yeah. What is she into? What does she do with her uh, computer? Um, she, she, so, so she's a tech, she teaches technology at an elementary. Oh, school. she's very sophisticated. So okay. Yeah. No, she, 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 she knows her way around. Computers. She'll pick up some great she's tips, uh, actually, because yeah. I think these are yeah. really well trained instructors. And I bet you some of the yeah. skills they use uh, will 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 be things that she might want to bring to the school. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, I have one really, really quick question. Yes. So I called the show, geez, maybe like 10, 11 years ago when I was like 14. I don't know what episode it's on. Is there any way to search the tech? Because I know you used to be able to search the Tech Guy Labs website. Uh, that yeah, I, don't, I would use Google, but you can do it with Google for sure. Um, so search okay. for, but the problem is we only use your first name in town, as you know, Aaron from Flagstaff. Yeah. So you'd have to search. Yeah. You were 14. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. It was and it was on the radio show or the TV show? Yep. Yeah, radio show. I'm 24. It was, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing this, yeah, been like 10 years. this, this dang radio show for <laughs> since yeah. 19, it's in 2004. What is that? 18 years. It'll be 19 years in January. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, sure, there's probably 10-year-olds uh, who are now in their 30s. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it makes me feel old, but, uh, you know, that's great. I'm glad. I'm thrilled, in fact. What did you ask? Do you remember? Um, I asked, yeah, I was calling to get a new router, and I was asked, and I had a really crappy old router that sucked. And, and I think you, you, you guys made some jokes about it, and you had, like, a song playing. <laughs> I hope this wasn't a fever dream. Music, right? We made fun of you with a song? No. Not, not, not. You're out of sucks and you need a new one. <laughs> Time to get one. It was, bad. It was really funny. It was, it was, you didn't like make fun of No, you you guys used to have more like music right after calls, didn't you? With like I don't know. I don't remember Like little that. jingles and stuff. I don't know. Maybe. I'll try to find it. Maybe. Some of the other, uh, it might have been in the other tech shows. Some of the other tech shows, they do a lot of uh, sound effects. I, you know, yeah, I. It was, definitely the, it was definitely your show. I definitely. try not to do sound effects. Correct. Because it's just really annoying, I find, uh, throughout the. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That's throughout the whole show <laughs> yeah. to drop in these <laughs> sound effects. I have them. But uh, I never, I never, I never use them. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out! Oh, well. <laughs> a couple of weekends ago, you were playing with, with a sound effect generator with uh, uh, Micah, right? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was helping me get new sounds for my sound effects that I never use. Uh, you know, it's something you do when you first start in radio because you listen to famous people on the radio and they you know dr don in san francisco on kfrc used to play a lot of sound effects i miss in the morning every time he said the time he'd press a duck button and go rang, rang. and uh you grow up with that but that was a long, long time ago i think i hope we've grown we've grown past that <laughs> uh i i will uh you know send me if you could send me the information i can do a search so leo at leo at techilabs.com let me see if i can search for it for you but 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 Google's your friend. Google, even when we had a search on the website, I would always tell people, oh, I don't use that. <laughs> Go to Google, type site. I'll try Googling first. Yes, you do. What you do is you use site colon techguylabs.com and then in quotes, do Aaron and Flagstaff or whatever uh, and see what that comes up with. Google is your is your friend most of the time on this stuff. Much better than our site search. Yeah. Okay, I'll try that. Thank you so much. Hey, it's a pleasure talking to you, Aaron. Watch out, though, because here comes <laughs> the dance segment on the Tech Guy Show. No, no, I'm just kidding. 8888, ask Leo. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. My ride's here. I'm going to take a break. We'll be back later. Someday. A couple of minutes. How about that? Yeah. yeah. My ride's here. A great line. I'll be right out. What hasn't he found? Oh, Aaron and Flagstaff? <laughs> Scooter X, you're the Google Meister. The Google Master. Everybody dance now. Everybody dance now. Are those levels uh, pretty good? I should add some more. 
I did. Uh, I did do this one. Should we have more? <laughs> Should we have more sound effects? <laughs> I have so many sound effects. So many sound effects. But I haven't attached them to buttons yet. This thing, the big stream deck I got, has how many buttons? And I didn't even, I stopped using the uh, Security Now thing. I should, I should do that, John. Or maybe not. I'm so used to how to switching it. I... Yeah. Then we could. Uh, well, what I'd love is with if I don't know if Zoom ISO would allow us to have buttons. Yeah, I could bring the stream deck out to the uh, living room. Yeah. Oh, that's a great. Yeah. So I will use that. That would be uh, that would actually be great. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can do well, that. This that's the stack, right? Oh, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll figure that out. I do. I do. I know. I I do. And I do. But I use the IRC uh, uh, screen a lot too. So, yeah, I love the idea of having a stream deck on that little side table. Um, yeah, well, that's what we'll do some rehearsals, I think is going to be. <laughs> what do you think, Dr. Mom, about, uh, this whole idea of this BQ? One actually, it's not just BQ one. There's another one too. I'm starting to, th you know, I didn't get the uh, the booster because my doctor said, "Well, I want you to wait six months after you had the last booster for maximum uh, immunity," which makes sense. Spread it out a little bit. Also, I had COVID, of course, in August, no July, which was I'm almost certainly BA one. So some Omicron variant. So that I think what I saw about BQ1 is that it's it seems to be a escaping immunity except possibly the the possibly the uh yeah, we're going to have to deal with it. I think we're going to be back in masks. And oh yeah, I'm going to address this one Mike. That's good. That's a good question. Yeah, I'm going to get the shot before we go to well it's too late for Vegas, but Leo Laporte the tech guy you're playing a little country music, aren't you there, uh, Professor Laura? Yeah. She's a little bit country. She's a little bit rock and roll. 8888-ASK-LEO is the uh, phone number. Nothing wrong with a little Kenny Chesney on a Saturday afternoon, right? Right. Mike B. in our chat room, and I have a little bet. I'm going to send him a case of lobsters, and uh, he's going to send me the Statue of Liberty, if he's wrong. Uh... He says there's no way Apple's having an event this month. We know Apple, probably, in all likelihood, like 90%, is going to announce new M2-based MacBook Pros, perhaps a Mac Mini, perhaps an iMac, maybe a preview of a Mac Pro, all based on the M2 chip. We know they have a new iPad waiting in the wings and a new iPad Pro waiting in the wings. Plus, perhaps other stuff. Now, that's, if my math is right, seven or eight new products... But the current, you know, betting line is uh, that Apple is not going to do an event. They're just going to put out a press release, you know, uh, make a video, put it on YouTube, um, send, you know, the hardware to a few tame 
members of the YouTube gaggle for review, quote, I put that in quotes, for review, uh, and just leave it at that. Mike B. may be getting that case of lobster. I don't think I have anywhere to put the Statue of Liberty anyway. So um, I've been saying they should do an event because what a great way to get people's attention. One of the counter arguments is, well, if they do that and the stuff isn't redesigned, it's just like kind of a improvement on existing stuff, the press is going to crucify them. Well, can I tell you that's what Microsoft did on Thursday? I don't think the press crucified them. I think you get, it's a free ad, free 60 second ad. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Mike B sending me, I thought, oh, he's, I'm going to send him a case of lobster. He's going to send me a case of crabs. It should go the other way around. We have crab out here. He's got lobster out there. I don't know. Well, anyway, I'm going to lose this bet, I think. Well, if they were going to have an event, we felt like they would be having it this Tuesday, and they haven't sent out any invitations, so this Tuesday's out. Still a possibility that they will have an event on the 25th, the following Tuesday, a week from Tuesday, because we do know, they've already announced, their quarterly results will be announced on the 27th, and it seems likely that they will release Mac OS Ventura, their new Mac OS. Oh, that's another thing. That's another thing they need to talk about, and iOS I'm sorry, iPad OS 16 for the iPad. That's another new thing. I think it's more than a, it deserves, it, it deserves more than a press release. Anyway, we're watching. Watching with interest. And uh, I'll let you know the minute we know the, the really, the only moral of this story, the only thing you need to worry about is if you were in the market for any of those products, a new MacBook Pro, a new Mac Mini, a new iMac, or a new Mac Pro, I would wait at least till the end of the month to see what Apple announces for two reasons. One, you may want the new thing. Two, the old thing might be reduced in price as a result. So I'll be, I'll be disappointed. I, you know, what does it cost them to make a little video? <laughs> Maybe it's just that they, they, they were, they, this is what Microsoft did. They didn't invite anybody to an event. They just said Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern, we're going to release a video. And they released it, and we all watched it. Well, you probably didn't. I had to get up early in the morning to watch it. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Those videos are expensive, says Mike B. I think Apple can afford it. I'm, I'm just saying. I think they got some money. I do. Bob on the line from Honolulu, Hawaii. Hello, Bob. Hi, Neil. Can you hear me okay? I hear you great. Welcome. Great, thank you. Hey, I have a hard drive problem. I got an external hub with an internal SSD. I hooked up uh, an external hard drive that I wanted to back up, and it failed. And I'm not sure if it failed because of low voltage. Yeah, so a lot of times these powered USB hubs don't have enough power to drive uh, the hard drive. Does the So the hard drive is what we call bus powered. It doesn't have a separate connection to the wall it has Correct. yeah so it's all powered by usb usb yeah. uh isn't very powerful it's five volts uh i think it's 10 watts total on most usb adapters so that hard drive who makes it well, seagate seagate so it's designed to operate on uh, 10 watts um but it could very well be have you tried plugging into the computer directly just to see yes i subsequently did and it, it still didn't work okay it makes it sort of a, a clicking, humming, sort of a humming. Oh, yeah, it's broken. Intermittently. But you just got it. Yeah. You can return it. So hard drives, sometimes. <laughs> no, no, I've had it a while. I oh. Data oh, it's an old hard drive. Oh. Yeah. It's got the click of death. Yeah. So there's one yeah, thing I you should it. try. Uh, it's in the Army manual. They call it percussive maintenance. <clears throat> <laughs> Take, you know what I'm. You know where I'm going with this. Take a screwdriver and just whap it briskly. <laughs> Don't hammer on it. Just one brisk whap. Because what does sometimes happen with the hard drive has been sitting around unused? Is called stiction. It's a spinning driver. And as you said, SSD though. Spinning. Pardon yeah. me. No, no. I'm, it's spinning. It's spinning driver. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back up to an SSD. Oh, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Spinning drives. Sometimes the head gets <laughs> stuck to the platter. It's not even supposed to touch the platter. It's supposed to retract and be out of the way. But mm. this has happened, and I don't know if it happens with modern drives, but if it's an older drive, whack it just once. Boom. There's a sharp brisk just to loosen, to shake the head loose and try it again. If it doesn't, 
any particular direction? Of no, I don't know what direction. I would do it on the side because you're the head is the uh, parallel to the platter, which is you know uh, on its gotcha. on the side. So do the side, maybe jar, jar jar the head. But I don't know. Try it once on the side. If it doesn't work, spank it on the bottom. See what happens. Uh, Leo. In, in addition, uh, last week you had a gentleman with the same problem, and you mentioned getting a USB ATA adapter. Yeah, I mean, so what's also possible is that the container has failed, but the fact that you hear a click means a drive is struggling. It's trying to work. The actuator's broken. The Maybe if you dropped it, the arm got bent. If you hear that, I think it's most likely the drive and not the container. You could try it, but it's probably the drive, and the container won't help. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Johnny Jet, travel guru, coming up. Side is better. Side is better. They say, do, <laughs> Twisted Mister says, do not whap it on the top because that could crash the head. It's a good point. You don't want the head to jam into the disc. And we and it could be, we don't know where the head is. It could be adhered to the disc upside down as well as right side up, depending on how many platters in that thing. So that's a good point, Twisted Mister. Hit it on the side. I think probably stiction is not a thing anymore, but I just like to say whap it. Hello there, Johnny. Jonathan. Hey, Leo, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, thank you. I don't know if you saw my tweet last week. I tagged you, but that's one of the <gasps> subjects I was going to talk about. Let me just put let me it in let there. me pull it up. I didn't see. No, it. I just you, no, I just put I just put the uh, tweet in the chat room. Okay, I see it. So, it, it, I did it when it happened. I tagged you. Um, uh, San Francisco 49ers, Carolina Panthers, Greenbrier Resort, Atlanta Falcons. I don't get it. What? This is them flying from uh, yeah. Charlotte to Atlanta. Yes. No. The 49ers were flying from. Oh, they're in San. They were. They were at Levi Stadium for the Panthers, right? Or maybe no, not. I don't remember. See. So this is their no, they flight. Should, they they, they should have been. Do they fly they, private? They, yeah, they all. They all fly. You're kidding. They, I mean, they fly. They well, charter. This is United Air. This is a United Airlines. They plane, charter. But they, tra yeah. they charter. It. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Although I think some the the, the uh, Boston New England Patriots has their own plane. By the way, you and did uh, you did not put me in this tweet. So did I not? You put yeah, I did. Look at the very first one. Oh, I'm looking at uh, the sports and aviation tweet, not your tweet. Let's go back to your no, tweet. but but if you if you scroll down to it, you'll see like oh, you replied. There's not, there's not, there's not a lot of comments. Oh. Yet. I, just, I just tagged you. Ah, oh, I get what you're just saying. Just said I'll mention this next week. Because so, I know you like the forty, I know you like the forty niners. Anyway, you can just t click the very top of this and just see this handle, their handle. Because what they do is they do every major sports team, not just football. They do baseball. They jet, do JetTip.net. That one. Well, that's 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 one of the. Oh, um, you're saying these guys, Sports Plus Aviation. Yes. Oh, yeah, I should put, follow yeah. them. I get it. But, so I know we talked about it last, uh, not last week. We talked about last year, maybe with that guy Jack who does. Uh, you know, Elon Musk, Jet, and all these yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. So now there's these guys are like copycats, I believe. But this is not a bot. This is actually people nice. who are handling it. Nice. Anyway, if if it's interesting if you like if you love aviation, if you like sports, yeah. it's interesting to see when these guys take off. I have and, uh and when they land. I have gone to SFO to welcome the Giants back. Did you really? When they won the pennant or something, I can't remember with the Giants. As a fan, fan or or were you working? Well, a little both. I was uh, when I worked at KNBR, the, which is the Giants radio station. I, I was the president of the Giants fan club, so we would organize. Isabel Lemon, our brilliant pro promotions director, would organize little things like this. And we went on trips. We did all sorts of stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. So we, uh, I've been to SFO. I remember the gate. They were over at the United, the distant United gate. And they would get off and we'd go, yay, yeah, go team. Uh, I can't remember <laughs> if I ever did it for the Niners. I don't think so. Lisa's the Niners fan. I used to be the Giants fan, but I didn't, I didn't even know the playoffs were going on. I, I've, are you, I've, are so you kidding lost, me? I've so lost touch with baseball. Actually, that's one of the flights I just, saw on their feed was the um, Seattle Mariners and they actually landed at Boeing Field not SeaTac oh that's is, cool uh, Boeing Field that's is awesome good, that's like a is that an executive jet you think 
Oh, here that we go. And also, that's that's where they launched the planes. They're brand new flights Ooh. or brand new. Ooh. Big Island, I worked at KSFO, KNBR, KGO, all in San Francisco, and uh, Clock FM, which is long gone. Hey! Into the cabin, and I settled down inside. I asked him if I'd ever seen so much dust and sand, and he said, what'd he say, what'd he say? He said what? I said. He doesn't go on uh, by road. He goes by plane. It's Johnny Jet, not Johnny 18 Wheels. Hello, Johnny, our travel Hello. guru on the Hello. Tech Guy Show. Johnny joins us every week to talk about better travel through tech. How many years have you been doing this on the on the radio with me? Do you know? On the radio? Since, well, I used to do your Tech Guy Show in 2003. So, it's not the forever. Tech Guy Show, the, uh, call, the call, call for, for help. help. So, you've been doing this show as long as no, I have, I, 18 no, years. No, 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 no. No, because you're not that we, we, old. We, but we lost contact. So oh, thank God. I've only been doing it eight or nine years. <laughs> you couldn't but be. I don't miss very you many. must have been a child when you were on the TV show. I, I was just a baby. <laughs> were you my just mom becoming? Had, my mom had to sign off on me. Were you just becoming Johnny Jet? Was that your early initiation? You know, I, started, I started my newsletter right out of college, 1995. Oh, that's cool. That's a, that was website, brilliant 99. of you, that you saw this as being the future Listen, travel. I did it all for fun. I used to be afraid to fly. Not only afraid to fly, I was afraid to leave the house at one point well, in high you school. You were agoraphobic? Yes, I was a lot wow. of phobics. <laughs> a lot of phobics. It, <laughs> How do you and, feel about spiders? Uh, I'm okay with them. Okay. Actually, I have a picture of me in Belize with a huge tarantula on me when we were filming the Travel so Channel you, show. You have overcome your phobias, clearly. I mean, I have, but there's times where I have little setbacks and things like that. And actually, one of them right is right now. Actually, I uh -oh. don't really have a desire to get on a plane. And, and uh, is that, that is more of because of COVID? Uh, not because COVID. Well, COVID was the big reason in yeah. the beginning. Yeah. But now it's my kids. I have two little kids, three yeah. and six, and you know my priority is to be with them. And I just Jennifer and I used to fly separately, so that if the plane this is crazy, so that if the plane went down, the kids wouldn't be orphaned. Yeah, I, I I can I understand that. I'm not worried about the plane going down. Yeah, no, you're worried, worried about, about your things, kids. Uh, yeah, other things happen yeah. while you're on the ground. Other place, car accidents or whatever. That's much more but, dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. In and, fact, uh, I used to be scared to fly. I used to fly a lot. I remember flying when I was, you know, we'd have. To, I went to college back east, so I'd have to fly to college, and I was always a little lump in my stomach. But after you do it a lot, you kind of get used to it. But you're right. Every I, once in a while, it comes and goes. You, and you go, oh, I'm a little scared again. Yeah, and unfortunately, I'm in one of those lulls right now. I'm, yeah. I'm not afraid to admit it. Should but, you change um, your you know, name to Johnny Train? Well, no, it's not that. <laughs> I just don't want to leave my kids. Yeah. To give you an example, you know, a couple of weeks ago, my son threw up my uh, daughter's hairband up into the light. And all of a sudden, it started smoking. And, you know, if I wasn't here, who the heck knows what would happen? I know. I know. My I wife, can think of My wife didn't know. She was in the other room. And I, I was yeah, like, I can think of a dozen smell. near misses. It's amazing kids survive. <laughs> it is. And listen, I'm, I'm going to get over it and yeah. I have to. Yeah. And I will. But, you know, the, business travel has not really come back yet. That's um, an interesting thing. And, and business travel is really subsidized. Uh, we uh, tourists. Yes. That was the big well, money maker for the airlines. It was. And now I was just watching an interview just now with the American Airlines, uh, one of the executives saying how a lot of these trips are blended. Most of their trips are blended now where they're combining work with leisure. And this is all new to them. They keep thinking it's going to end, but it hasn't ended. And they don't know if it will ever end. It's just I think now businesses the learned the it was an expense they didn't need to spend. Now with the recession, businesses are looking for places to cut. So maybe after does the recession. It, why, what does it matter know. where people work as long as they exactly. get their work done? And exactly. that was always my attitude when I when I hired people to work for me. I don't care where you are or when you work, just as long as the work gets done. Yeah. And so I think that I think other um, employee employers are learning that. Does it mean uh, airfares will go up as a result because they don't have that big subsidy for, or will we have fewer flights? How, how are the airlines going to respond to this? Well, the airlines are making money right now. Really? So, and, and they don't have as many planes in the air as they did because they don't have enough staff. So this this podcast I was just listening to, the American Airlines said, you know, only 90% of their planes are back, but their revenue is 110% of what it was. 
So they're making money. And Delta said the same thing. They, I think they have 87% of their planes back. They just don't have enough staff members and they're all trying to train. So if you thought the airports were crowded this summer, wait till next summer. And United Airlines this week announced that they're going to fly 30 something flights to Europe to different destinations. These airports are going to be packed. I would start looking at secondary airports. What? Um, we're going you know, to, we're going to, Li gonna, we're going to Lisbon in uh, April. Well, you're Lisbon. You're okay. Yeah, that's a Lisbon. secondary airport all, all by itself. But I think we have but to stop Heathrow, somewhere. They're, yeah. they're going to start putting passenger limits and, sit, and Netherlands did the same thing. And they're going to do it again probably during Christmas. I think so, our flight, we have a nonstop to Lisbon. No, yeah, nonstop to Lisbon. But there are no nonstops from Rome to San Francisco. No, things. that's not true. United Airlines just announced this week they're flying on May 25th. Oh, that's I after we leave. Notes. That's a because, but that's a weird thing that there'd be no nonstop from from one of the biggest capitals of the world. Well, that's why United Airlines is jumping on this. Yeah. So they're uh, May twenty fifth. Yeah, on a triple seven two hundred, they're going to start Ooh, flying. Doesn't help gonna, us. Well, I guess we could stay in wrong. Italy till May. Why not? Hey, <laughs> and you know what? You might get a good deal because this is another way to get good deals. Is when airlines launch new flights, they usually offer really cheap flights, like. Um, Breeze Airways, I mentioned them before. They're, they're going to start flying white planes to LAX nonstop. White planes is right outside New York City. Oh, I thought you were. <laughs> for a minute, I thought, I grew up. you mean the planes will be painted white? No, I understand. No, <laughs> white planes, New York. Okay. Always say white yeah. planes, New York. If you say they're going to be flying white planes, that sounds weird. That's funny. Well, or Westchester, we could say. Westchester. Uh, that's where you grew up. That's your, uh, isn't I, that your. I'm right outside there. I grew up in Connecticut. And those flights are $99, but you can fly nonstop to LAX starting November 2nd. Should you and always look for alternate airports when you are searching flights? I, I mean, if you want to save money, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I want to definitely. Say, no, I want to spend more money, John. I'm trying to find out how I can spend hey, Well, but, but it's not always. <laughs> secondary airports could cost you more money. Like, you know, oh. Burbank is usually more expensive than that's a secondary airport for LAX. Could, would a good LAX, travel agent do that or are they, uh, I mean. No, Def definitely. They'll yeah. tell you. Yeah. But you got to let them know that you're willing to I'm willing. travel. Also, and also when you're searching online, there's usually a box. Didn't, you didn't check, United, check or was it American, announced that Newark is no longer in New York's uh, metro? It wasn't It wasn't either of them. It was, um, I think the IATA did it, but oh. it, 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 that really meant nothing. It's, it's it meaningless? It still is. Okay. Definitely. Because the fares definitely. were different because if you were flying to New York City, which is LaGuardia, JFK, and used to be Newark, but now... It's still going to show up if you put in NYC. Okay. Good. So when I search for flights to go to New York, I yeah. do NYC to just to see if LaGuardia right. or, or uh, JFK or Newark. Newark will show up. I mean, none of them are in the city. LaGuardia is the closest, but LaGuardia is literally 15 minutes from Manhattan if there's right. no traffic. JFK is 30 minutes, and you know if you can go to Newark without traffic, it's 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 maybe 25 minutes, right. depending on where you are in the city. Right. So look Lower for Manhattan, this alternate uh, close by. Sometimes, I mean, I think maybe I should, I'm here, but we fly out of San Francisco or Oakland, but sometimes I'm thinking I should look at San Jose. Look at it, but I would think San Jose is usually more expensive, but not always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Oakland's better because I think the weather's better in Oakland, so you don't have as many delays. What's the prettiest airport in the country? Which airport do you like the best? The prettiest? The one you um, want to spend time in. Because I normally... The, I want to spend the least amount of time in the airport. Well, the best life. terminal, it's not by airport, it's by terminal. terminal. The best terminal in the country, in my opinion, is LAX's T T Tom Bradley, the brand new Tom international terminal. terminal. Yeah. But Detroit has a beautiful terminal. I like Terminal uh, 2 at SFO. That's a nice one. That's a beautiful terminal as well. Yeah. And they have, what I like about these airports <laughs> is that they have local food. That's when you know you've traveled too much. <laughs> when you go, uh, you know, Terminal 2 at SFO easily beats... <laughs> <laughs> terminal you know what? Seven, LaGuardia, yeah. believe it or not, LaGuardia has some new terminals. Yeah. And oh my God, they did amazing jobs. Yeah. Johnny I'm, Jet. Now, if you want to know more about travel, you got to go to his website, johnnyjet.com. He's got a free news, actually several free newsletters, a must subscribe. He's got Twitter lists. Follow him on Twitter and then look at his lists. Some really great stuff, including like flight attendant tweets and so forth. And on Instagram too. He's afraid of flying again, folks, so we're going to call him Johnny <laughs> Locomotive from now on. Leo Laporte. I'm not afraid. Not afraid. More not afraid to fly. <laughs> afraid to travel. Afraid. Pop, Papa Johnny. 
He's afraid of leaving. I'm afraid his to leave my kids. Kids behind, and I don't blame you. In That'd fact, I'm going to say this right now, John. They are at an age. I look back. I have lots of pictures, of course, because uh, right about this age, your kids' age, we started taking digital. So I have all these old pictures of the kids, and I look at them and I go, I wish I they were that age again. I want to be with those people because you know what happens as kids get older. It's like new people every couple of years, like as a new person. You know that by now. Jack yeah. is not the same as he was a year ago or two years ago. Correct, but he's still. He's, He's still, still adorable, and cuddly. Yeah, but they're not going to stay that way. For, so, in so you know what? Stay home, John. Pretend you're traveling. No, listen. If there was a reason where I was getting paid well to travel, I would do it. But it's just not worth it. Yeah, yeah. To me, it's money. It's a uh, money. And out, listen, out I pocket. travel with them, and and I have a bunch of trips booked with them, and I love to travel with them, and they love to travel. Fortunately, so I'm still traveling. I'm just not doing it like I used to. I I would I would be on a plane every three days. Yeah. Up until. Uh, best you know, best thing I ever did was take uh, Jennifer didn't want to go on cruises. Abby didn't want to go on cruises. Although now she says I would have gone. I said no. You I asked you and you said no. But Henry, my son, always wanted to, was my cruise buddy, and he's been on more than a dozen cruises with me because we yeah. would do these educational. You know, I would I would go on these geek cruises, and he would always go with me. He's been all over the world, and, and I really cherish that. And he's a lucky man. He's he Look. now is starting to realize it. He said, Dad. We went to China, right? I said, yes. <laughs> he said, did I see the terracotta warriors? I said, do you want me to send you the picture of you sitting next to the terracotta warriors? Just That's to awesome. jog your memory. He does yeah. remember that uh, all these uh, uh, young uh, country girls from China wanted to get their picture taken with him in Beijing. Like they would, I have all these pictures of them posing with Henry. Hey. <laughs> My son went on 70 flights in less than two What? Years, Jack went on is, 70 flights? Which is too many. No, no, that's too just many. Just to give you an idea. His, so, his gene pool has been destroyed by now. So COVID, we we stopped. And now he's yeah. only been on a handful. Does he remember? It, he probably doesn't remember the old ones. Not really. Not really, no. no. I'm telling you, my 28-year-old doesn't remember <laughs> trips we took when he was 14. So, you know, <laughs> did we go to China? Yes. <laughs> We spent weeks in China. <laughs> so what I do, by the way, is I, I have flight journals for each of my kids. Every time mm. we get on the plane, they hand it to the pilots, also with a bag of chocolates to the flight attendants. Oh, so they cool. sign it. So each we have every single one of their flights recorded. I wish. And then I, I take a picture of it to that. make sure that just in case there was ever yeah. a fire, that we don't lose it. I have realized now at my advanced age that I, even the dopey pictures I took, you know, just of like, things we were doing are great because you go oh i remember that so even the non you know i, I always try to take these art you know art photos but even just the snapshots are great and i have 50 or sixty thousand in google photos i'm a mad documenter I've i love always that been. yeah and I, I mean i take a picture of every meal oh the, yeah there you go you're worse than me the yeah. kids though got mad would i have a lot of pictures of them going dad my kids are now hamming it up. I just don't like oh. to show their face on the internet. Yeah, yeah. I usually put I usually put fake sunglasses on them. Yeah, <laughs> that's cute. So, All right, Johnny. All right, take care. As always, love talking to you. All right, you too. All right, we'll All talk uh, next week. See ya. Bye. Woo! Let's go to Memphis. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Don't have any calls from Memphis. I'm sorry. I got Malibu, Costa Mesa, and Warsaw, Indiana. What what, what should I? <laughs> <laughs> Where should we go next? Let's go. Let, I'll tell you what. Let's go to Costa Mesa, and then we'll get we'll get all the other ones into. Hello to Jerry in Costa Mesa. Oh, in Costa Mesa, yes, yes, I'm your photo lady. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm still writing that book. I haven't got it done yet, but I, I've got a trouble uh, problem with my Epson printer. Mm. Got, got one of the ET two seven five zero. Yeah, I have that one. I think the twenty seven fifty. Yeah, that was those nice eco tanks. It was a good printer. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I replaced the ink in the uh, eco tanks once. I've had it just a little over a year. Yeah, it's, yeah. And well, you must uh, print a lot because, you know, they're yeah. supposed to go, but roughly two years. So you you print a lot. Yeah. Photos. Uh, pardon. Printing photos or just documents. No, just document. Well, okay. I don't print photos on it. It doesn't print photos worth No, anything. it's not a good photo printer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a business printer, yeah. So yeah. what's what's not but, working? Uh, well, it, the printing, the uh, type printing is now got little, every once in a while I'll have spaces in, in a yeah. letter. 
Yeah, you have uh, your ink uh, jet is clogged. Okay, so, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, this okay, happens. So on the printer, they have uh, a number of routines. Uh, there's a diagnostic, which you might run first, which will show, it'll print all the letters, and then it'll print blocks, and it'll show you, and you'll actually see that's what's happening when it prints blocks mm -hmm. of color, that there's holes where there should be a dot. Yeah. And that's because wow. that jet, and there's millions of them, that jet or jets are clogged. So okay. then they have, and the good news is on an eco tank, this isn't as expensive as it would be on a cartridge printer. They have routines to clear the nozzles. They use okay. a, they use a significant amount of ink. That's why it's better to do this on an eco tank. <laughs> you know, I think all, in my opinion, all ink jets clog if you don't use them all the time, because okay. the ink dries. And you know, I, Epson used to when they were an advertiser used to. <laughs> tell me leo don't say that i said well they do and they said no ours oh. don't because we've got special coatings i said well i beg yeah. to differ they do <laughs> <laughs> and it's just the way it is with a with a inkjet yeah. if 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 you don't print a lot it would be better to get a laser printer this is why epson doesn't want me didn't want me to say this because yeah. they don't make no, laser I, printers. I love this eco printer I, yeah you know i just can I put out the reason the reason i think on some, uh, and it's more expensive, on some printers, cartridge printers, you replace the print head when you replace the ink. And <laughs> on the Epsons, you do not. But they say, but no, Leo, we coat them so they don't they don't clog. Well, okay. <laughs> they do. Um, okay. you, if I would do the things that are built into the menu on your Ecotank first. Okay. Uh, they have a whole, and, and they'll even say, do it again and again, you know, until you get it clear and you do print the test page and then you go, still not, and you do it. You may have to do it several times if it's really uh, clogged okay. up, but it should okay. eventually uh, unclog it. If it doesn't, okay. I don't normally recommend this, but you can go to YouTube and say, unclog ink inkjet printer, and people, they, they have different remedies involving alcohol okay. and cotton Q tips and things okay. like that. I, okay. I don't think you should do that. I think just do the stuff yeah. that's built in. Okay. Yeah, well, last time I had this lovely conversation with you, we got talking about my book and my sailing and flying. Yes, I know, I know. So is the book uh, out? Oh, no, it's not out. I've been... Come on, uh, Jer. I've got an editor who is just bugging me, bugging me, too. So I just I have to get my acting gear. You know, I get reliving these stories in my mind, and then I start going over a picture, you know, all the you know, yeah. Jerry, you, you're talking to a sympathetic ear yeah. because I yeah. wrote a number of books in the 90s and it's like pulling teeth. I stopped finally. I said, this is too hard. Yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. But you've got everybody they say has one good book in them. You've yeah. got this great book about your life and we're all waiting for it, Jerry. So, yeah, well, I know. I know. <laughs> Are you going to put pictures in the book? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that's that's the whole story of it. That's going to be. Uh, done in little, um, like, three or four page stories and then pictures that go with the stories. Oh, man, I can't wait to see this. Yeah, so it you know, should be... Refre ref for people who didn't hear your preview, tell tell us how, in, in, in short, in brief, what this is about. Yeah, I an, was an aerial photographer for 35 years. And so I was into all kinds of adventures in planes and helicopters and flew all those and my husband was a boat builder and so he was doing transatlantic trans-pacific you know oh, sailings man. all over the place so every month or, or every couple of years or so we'd have some big grand adventure and a friend of mine who was a writer for one of the local magazines wrote an article on us in the early 90s about crash and splash because we had <laughs> <laughs> who was crash and who was splash <laughs> well see, that's just, i in fact i called the magazine to see if i could use that as the title of my book yeah and uh, so i'm writing i the think book you can that. they can they haven't trademarked that you're crash yeah. he's splash tell the story i love it <laughs> yeah. i love it i want to hear i want to read it i can't wait just keep working yeah. on it Keep working okay, on it, well, please. We, we beg of you, Jerry. And yes, I'm glad we okay. get that printer working. They call it nozzle check. Run the nozzle check. And then, okay. they, then they'll then they tell you. They'll recommend what to do. Okay. All right. Take, take care. Okay, take it's great care. to talk to you, Jerry. Crash and Splash. That's going to be a book. That's going to be a great book. Kevin on the line from Malibu. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Petaluma. Hello, Malibu. 
I saw uh, a, a very nice house just got sold for 85, or is about to be sold for $85 million. Shares house. Change in Malibu. Shares house. I want Shares house. <laughs> so what's uh, what's up in Malibu besides Shares house going for $85 million? Well, I tell you, Leo, I was listening to your Windows Weekly podcast the other day. Yes. And you and Paul inspired me to try VirtualBox 7 oh. on my iMac. Yes. Which I did last night about 2 a.m. Let's you run and Windows or other operating systems on your M1 Mac. Right. Well, it's not an M1 Mac. Well, it's Intel no. even better, yeah. Right. So I tried installing Windows 11 ISO, and I ran into this error over and over. Oh. So I said, hmm, maybe it's 11. So I tried Linux Mint, the yeah, new one, 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm getting the same problem. Uh-oh. Uh, so this is a real geeky call for everybody listening, so either you'll know in a minute or you won't. The error says NEM, N-E-M, yep. caps, failed to map pages into the VM. Ver NEM map pages failed. That's interesting. And uh, that's VirtualBox, which is a virtualization program. It lets you run on the Mac, but run other people's uh, operating systems, which is great. Yeah. So, um, so neither new, neither Google nor I nor Oracle's page could help me out. So you're my, you're the man, Leo. Yeah. Uh, so this is the problem that I know of with Windows. I don't know about Linux Mint, but in fact, we even talked about this. So Windows has its own virtualization system called Hyper V. You're probably aware of it. Mm -hmm. It is incompatible with VirtualBox. So you need to turn, go to the turn Windows features on or off, you know, the optional features settings. You could do a WinR, I think will get you there. And uncheck two things, Windows Sandbox and Hyper-V. Well, hold on one second. Where is that located? I'm looking at the screen. Oh, right but now. wait a minute. You're not running Windows. You're running Mac OS. Right, Mac OS. Kevin. Yeah, this is a known problem running uh, VirtualBox on Windows. Um, let me think. I wonder if this is I related. That. That's because Windows has its that. own. Yeah, it has its own virtualization, which is different. That's we we actually it's talked same, about that. The same error from both Linux Mint and Windows. Yeah. Huh. You know, and, and there's nothing on the uh, there's nothing on the Oracle uh, website about this. No, I typed in any app. Failed map. I got nada. All right, I have a page. Uh, hold on, we got to take a break. I have a page. I will give you in just a sec off the air. It's top Thank secret. You, <laughs> no, it's not. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. More calls still to come. <whistles> failed to map a memory object. Ver map failed. This is an old, old problem with virtual it's box. Ver underscore nem underscore mem. mem. Ver mem map. Oh. Mem, N E M, like Nancy. Yeah. Edward, mem. yeah. I, you know, uh, Paul was using it, I'm pretty sure, on his uh, Windows 11 box. Well, it sounded like it. Yeah. You know, it, so it, I know it works. It. Yeah. And I've seen other people talk about it. Make sure the type is set to OS 10 and the 64-bit version is selected. Got it. Um, again, it's happening with both Linux and Windows. Yeah, but it would make sense that the Mac needs... Yeah, I'm guessing that this is a setting in VirtualBox to make it work on the Mac, period, right? Because it's not a Windows or a Mint problem. It's a it's a Mac problem. Right. Um do you see anything about unsupported hardware? Uh, no, this is uh, newly reformatted, and there's hardly anything on here. I'm looking in the Windows, I'm sorry, the VirtualBox settings, and I don't see anything. I think, you, I think it might be a, a Mac set. Let me look at this here. Hold on a second. Hold on a sec. Is there a setting in uh, VirtualBox to say Mac OS? Yes, right? No. No. No, because it's the... I assume, because it's the Mac app, the Mac, you know, program for Mac that I downloaded and am running. 
you know, uploaded from a DMG. Uh, I would try re-downloading it. Maybe it's just corrupt. Because mm. okay. you're right. Because I don't see. I don't. I'm looking on Google and I don't see a lot of this issue. So yeah, I'm. Not. I'm thinking this is local. Well, let me show one other thing I see here <clears throat> on the uh, VirtualBox Manager window, the main window. Yeah. On the left side, there's a. a a column where you can have your different machines. Um, and there's, so I see the Mint 21, and I, uh, it says, you know, powered on, powered off. There's a little button, and when I click to power it on, or I click start, it changes from powered off to, it opens a window quickly, and then it says aborted. And if this is too geeky, we can move on. I can say have a great <laughs> oh, it's not too geeky. I just don't know. I don't have an answer for you, I think. Um, well, let me I think what you. I would do for is probably re-download. Remember, this is a beta, so they may have problems. What, what, tell me about your Mac. It, what, what kind of Mac? Is it, you said it's M1? It's an uh, uh, iMac running uh, no. Catalina. It is it's it, a 21-inch. It, it's got 8 gigs of memory. And it's an M1. Uh, no. It's, it's an a, Intel. Intel. Make sure you get the. Uh, I bet you have the wrong uh, virtual box. Make sure you get the one for Intel. Uh, they have now that they have one for Mac OS ARM. Yeah, no, I I looked pretty good on there before. Okay, could just be a and, bad. Yeah, you know, this is one of those things I started at two in the morning and was up till five. <laughs> you know how you felt oh, I'm so that. sorry. I know that feeling, baby. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. So I what the news that. was that they have now an M1 version of VirtualBox, but uh, you're running the old version. So just make sure you got the Intel, not the ARM version of that. And then I would just try re-downloading. It might be also you have um, you have a problem with it. So that one's not a beta. This one's been out for a while. So go back to six, maybe. Maybe. Seven. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I have a compliment for you. Oh. I'm watching you on the uh, on my Amazon show. Yes. When you're on with Johnny Jet. Yes. Can't find two bigger smiles. <laughs> Johnny so and I are, are, are good friends. You guys I, I love Johnny. I, I uh, he's a he's a great guy. So he always well, makes the energy me smile. between you is just so, thank you. It sounds great, but watching it is even thank better. you. It's very kind. I wish you the best. I thank you for your time, Leo. Thank you, friend. Take care. Have a good day. Bye bye. You too. Bye. I wonder if 8 gigs is not enough. That's pretty light for a virtual machine, right? Am I back or about to leave? I am here, Chi Town Deke. Were you a Deke or is that your name, Deke? I had a couple of college roommates who were Deke. Delta Kappa Epsilon. <laughs> Not BA5, Roberto. There's a new one. BQ1. Chi Town Geek. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. The Bears. The Bulls. I am here now. Yeah, Mike will be here next week. It is my back. <laughs> That's my front. <laughs> Oh, uh, your Tau Cap Epsilon. And so uh, Deke, uh, which uh, my trainer was a member of, was founded at Yale. My uh, college roommates were Deke. It was kind of a athletic fraternity, so to speak. Brett Kavanaugh is Deke. And um, who else is Deke? Somebody in the news today. Deke Slayton is a different Deke. Oh, I love Go. Go's a good language. I'm an all, I'm a Lisp guy. I'm a Lisp guy, but uh, Go is a very, very good choice, I think. Modern, nice modern language. Um, camera buying guide. I always go to read the reviews at DP Review, which I think is quite good, even though it's owned by Amazon. I think those guys are very good. I know them and trust them. So dpreview.com, as in digital photography. 
That's a wide area to camera guide. I mean, it depends what you want to learn, I guess. Brett and Squee. <laughs> yeah, remember those days, Valvi? <laughs> Who else is Deke? I just, uh, I was talking with my trainer, who's a Deke from uh, Cal. And I was talking with him, and he said, oh, you know who else is a deke? I just found out. Oh, who was it? Somebody annoying. I like beer, too. I'm sorry, Kevin. I'm sorry. If the IRC can't help you, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, Google's big, a uh, big Go house. They invented Go, Go Lang, Go Lang, Go Lang. I, uh, I for a while was playing with Julia. I really like Julia. Uh, it would be my favorite modern language. But I think Lisp is my. Uh, I'm going to be a Lisper for life because I'm old. IRC is 34. Seems like it's older than that. 34 doesn't seem that old. I feel like IRC predates the web. I know it does. 1988. So it just barely outdates the web. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smart cars, smart watches, smart phones, junky gadgets with the, the gizwiz coming up. Phone number is 8888-ASK-LEO. If you have a question, a comment a suggestion 888-827-5536 toll free from anywhere in the u.s uh, or canada outside that area you can still reach us but uh you'd have to use skype out or something like that some voip solution the website where all the show notes live techguylabs.com and uh we have a chat room going uh, actually, a couple of chats. One on the modern Discord platform for our Club Twit members. Yes, they're all twits. And they admit to it. Isn't that amazing? But there's also a public chat going on a, a platform called IRC, Internet Relay Chat. And uh, IRC is celebrating its 34th birthday today. So happy birthday. Not our chat. But our chat, you know, so IRC was invented in 1988. Uh, there were chats before that. I used BitNet Relay. There were other chats that predated that. But uh, it was invented in Finland, the University of Ulu in Finland in 1988. This chat room, this IRC chat room of ours at irc.twit.tv has been going on almost as long. Uh, we started uh, having an IRC chat. I started having an IRC chat back in 1992. So I, I didn't realize this is this was <laughs> almost as old as IRC itself. When I started doing a, a, ra a syndicated radio show with John C. Dvorak called Dvorak on Computers, we had an IRC. Uh, I've kept it going ever since. Not the same server, not the same name, not the same people, but... From my point of view, there's always been a little IRC channel scrolling in the background of all my shows. It's very handy. We call them Team Tech Guy. I call them that. They don't call them themselves that. But I call them Team Tech Guy because they're like my brain, externalized. So many of them have been around for 10 or more years. They, uh, they remember stuff that I've long forgotten. So happy birthday, IRC. And uh, celebrate with us at irc.twit.tv. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, had a lot of fun over the years with IRC. It's an easy, a fast, simple protocol to use. You can actually do it in the web if you want at irc.twit.tv. That's a web page. But, it, but the real pros will run what they call an IRC client, which is a bit of software that will uh, run IRC on the Mac. I use a textual hex chat on Windows and Linux. Uh, these are free programs you can run. And uh, and then it's the text scrolls up like the old days. <laughs> White text on a black screen. <laughs> it's all text, baby. 
8888 Ask Leah. Back to the phones we go. Daniel, very patient from Warsaw, Indiana. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Leo. I remember you from watching watching you on TV. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, on Tech TV, we actually had chat back in the uh, late 90s, but it was a weird avatar chat looked a lot like this metaverse stuff people are talking about that was 20 years ago we did that well good well thank you welcome back what can i do for you um i got an unrecognizable hard drive uh the computer will recognize it as a uh, drive yeah it won't recognize any of the files and so it, at it, one point it, it it used to recognize it but now it doesn't yes okay so usually what that means is that there uh, is an area of the hard drive that's been damaged or munged, sometimes a soft damage, sometimes hard damage. And that area of the hard drive is like the catalog, the, the table of contents for the drive. So uh, if it could see the drive, it means the drive's mounting up and, you know, the hardware can see it. But then it looks at it. Does it think the drive's empty? Does it say you need to format this drive? What does it say? Uh, it says files unrecognizable. Oh, interesting. So I was wondering, what software uh, can I use to uh, bring it back? Yeah, like, this is uh, a great question because there are different levels of damage. And depending, and it's kind of hard to tell from your description what the level of damage is. Uh, if the files are unreadable, it actually may be a hardware problem that their interface to the drive is damaged in some way. So that's... I've not seen that error. That's an unusual error. Usually, it'll either say this drive is not formatted, or sometimes, which means the table of contents is is damaged and it doesn't see the partition table, or uh, it'll say uh, there's nothing on this drive, <laughs> which sometimes happens. But I cannot read the drive. Is interesting. Um, so it says, uh, it's, it says they're unrecognized. The format is unrecognizable. The question is okay. The question is how much you want to spend to get this drive back. <laughs> uh, I mean, that you can get a new drive for 50 bucks. So, uh, and almost any solution is going to be at least that much. From what you're describing, I think the first thing I'd try is my friend Steve Gibson's program called Spinrite. You can get this from grc.com, but it's 90 bucks. So it is, it is the kind of thing people who repair hard drives for a living might have. If you just had one drive and you don't really care all that much what's on it, 90 bucks is a lot to pay. If there's something on there you got to have, you don't have a backup of, then maybe this is uh, worth spending a little money on. Start with Spinrite. There is no free version, no trial version. You have to buy it. What it does, just so you understand, it's very low level. It doesn't care about the contents of the file. It doesn't care about how the drive is formatted, what operating system, none of that. What it does is it goes through, as you may know, a hard drive. Is this a, it's a spinning hard drive, right? Oh, what happened? Kim, what line is that? Two? Three? Okay. Sorry, Daniel. Kim picked it up and then. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know if you heard what I was saying. Is it a spinning hard drive? Yes. Yes. So spin right. What it does is it goes sector by sector through the drive. Drive data is divided up into sectors. If you've been watching since the screensavers days, you probably know this. It's divided up into sectors. It goes through each sector. What happens is your operating system looks at a sector and says, I can't read that. I can't read that. Eventually says, I can't read this drive. But Spinrite doesn't give up. It keeps reading until it can get the data off the drive, relocates it to a known good sector, and then marks that sector bad. Every hard drive has bad sectors. It's not right. so what what's what's possibly happening I don't I'm not sure but what one of the possible things that could be going wrong is that the hard drive is part of it has become unreadable it but sometimes unreadable by windows doesn't mean unreadable entirely spinright can can often read it with a by dint of labor and it may be a lot of time it could take sometimes days but if it can read it, it can relocate it, it can rebuild the table of contents or whatever is damaged, and you're good to go. Now, I'd still get a new drive. I'd get the stuff off it and get a new drive. Because once a right. drive starts to fail, it. how old's the drive? Um, probably about four years old. Yeah. They start to fail around this time. I mean, not a lot, but about 7% a year, every year from now on. So you're in the I, lucky... I, don't, I haven't been using it. It's just been stored, so uh, I went to get some of the photos off. 
and now it won't. I can't get the photos off. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of things that can happen if a drive is stored. Uh, you, you have used that drive on this particular computer before? Um, not for a year or so. Okay. But at some point, you were able to read the drive on that. Because yes. I want to make sure the drive is formatted in a way the computer can read it and so forth. If you had a Mac, yes. if you wrote it in a Mac, you wouldn't be able to read it on your Windows machine, that kind of thing. Right. So, okay, you were able to read it in the past. So we know the data's put there in a way that it can be read. It just can't read it right now. Maybe it's that old thing I was talking about where you whack it with a screwdriver. It could be stiction. I think it's more likely that the drive over time has deteriorated. The magnetic signals on the drive platter has deteriorated. That's what SpinWrite's good for. So SpinWrite is probably the one tool I'd recommend because it's low level. The next level up is to say, oh, no, I can see stuff on here, but it's damaged, it's scrambled, and they're trying to recover it. That's a different thing. That's like file on erasers. That's a higher level thing. But I would start, you know, SpinWrite's not for every drive problem, but this particular problem, it's certainly the one I would try if you're willing to spend 90 bucks. Right. Uh, how about... Uh, programs like Azus or Drill Doctor or Stellar. Yeah, those are those are a little different. They operate at what I what I called a higher level at the file system level. So if spin right, any recommendations as far as those? Um, no, not really. Um, okay, because <laughs> I'll be honest with you. If a drive fails on me, I throw it out because I always have a backup. I throw it out. I don't take a. I don't try and try again. Um, I'm guessing you don't have a backup of something that's on that drive. No. Yeah. Uh, try the free one. Scooter X is reminding me called Recover. Bad name. I tried that. Didn't work. Uh, that that mainly is for um, uh, SD cards and the like of that. Well, it's the same thing. Any fat formatted. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, it it found a bunch, but it uh, didn't. Um move them over to a different drive. Okay. Yeah. I didn't say it, there was uh, photos there. By the way, as soon as you start running these things, unfortunately, you may make it impossible for uh, other recovery software to work because, uh, you know, Recover, what Recover is supposed to do is you say a, a, a different drive and say move that stuff over. If it wasn't able to move it, I'm thinking this sounds more and more like my original hypothesis, which is this hard drive is just hard to read. And it's in the operating system's not doing it. I can't promise you that Spin try, Spin Right will get it back. I understand that's ninety bucks uh, with a big question mark. But if you really care about it, uh, I think Spin Right's the right choice. What's happening, in my opinion, and I think the Recover uh, result tells me this is accurate, is the drive because it's old. It's starting to lose its grip. It, some of the sectors are getting hard, too hard to read. Nothing will try harder than SpinWrite. If SpinWrite can't read it, you can't get it back. It may not get all of it back. It may only get some of it back. Uh, but some is better than nothing, right? I think that's probably your best bet. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number, 888-827-5536. Yeah, no trial period for SpinWrite. I wish there were. And don't be thrown by the fact that it came out in 2004. It is an old program, but but so are hard drives. It still works. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Thank you, Professor Laura, for giving me happy feet. John is on the line from Portugal, our favorite fan from the Algarve. Hello, John. Hi, Leo. How's it going? It's going great. How are things in Portugal right now? It's wonderful. It's, oh, gosh. It's about 75 <laughs> degrees and balmy. It's beautiful. Does, does, it, does it get to be wintry? You're in southern Portugal, so I guess you're on the Mediterranean. It does. I've been here about a year and a half, and it gets, you know, it gets like where it's only highs in like the 60s. Oh. And you know, kind of like, <laughs> you know. Oh, it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you today, John? <laughs> uh, I have a weird thing where I I am able to cast from my laptop on Bluetooth to my LG smart TV. Yeah. But I can't do it from my Android phone. Okay. Yeah. You know, so it shows up, you know, I go to in windows 
I go to add Bluetooth, you know, device and everything, and it and the TV shows up. It's not using. I should say it's not using Bluetooth to send video. It's just using Bluetooth to signal. So your TV says it is yeah, cat. Yeah, I'm on the same network. I'm yeah, on the yeah. Same network. And it, so it's using Wi-Fi at some point. Is it? Does the TV say it's cast ready? Is that what the? What does the TV say? Well, that's the thing. I don't know if the uh, the it's got the latest OS of. Yeah, yeah. The greatest. Obviously. Yeah. I have a Roku, but there's other issues. I can't bridge my uh, Vodafone. So router what here. are? Let you do that. You you use the phrase. Router, so you I, use the term cast, which normally is short for Chromecast. And I'm trying to yeah. figure out what the capability. Windows has its own it's like screen share. It's like screen share, I think. Yeah. Okay, that's different. Yeah. So Windows has its own way of casting using DLNA. Uh, which which LG model is it? Um. Well, it's this wonderful OLED that <laughs> you've got. To buy. So LGs do, I believe, have Chromecast. I've ever had. Do, I think they do have Chromecast built in. Scooter X says they uh, they do. Um, let me look at this here though. It's, it's European. Oh, it's your, well, <laughs> well, I don't know. No, that shouldn't make any difference. It's an OLED 55A16 LN. Okay. Okay. So uh, Android uses Chromecasting, uh, to cast. Um, I am thinking the smart share is Windows only, so that's DLNA. Windows has a variety of names for this. So I don't think it's, let's see, share from Android. Let me see here. Share a screen from Android using Wi-Fi or share using Bluetooth. So sharing screen on Bluetooth may not result in the desired screen resolution and sound because Bluetooth doesn't have a lot of bandwidth. But you can do file sharing. Um... It's not recommended for screen sharing. You want to watch a show on there? Yeah, I want to watch, you know, HBO and all that. Yeah. Stuff on ExpressVPN. So it is DLNA. It is not, it's Miracast slash DLNA. It is not, that's why they call it Screencast, another name. This is Microsoft's, completely Microsoft's fault. They've never decided on how to, what name to use for this. It is not Chromecast. So here's what I would Miracast. do. Miracast. It's Miracast. Uh, you can probably get, in fact, I know you can, the LG Screen Share app on the Android store and then use Wi-Fi to connect. But what I would re recommend really, honestly, is to get 35 bucks the new Google Chromecast with Android uh, TV is really a great deal. And then, then you don't need any special software on your Android device. I'm sorry, with Google TV, not Android TV. That's the new one. You want the new one. Then you don't need any uh, special Android stuff. Almost all the apps like Netflix just have a little cast button that you use. It's a little dongle, plugs into your HDMI port. It's $50. Sorry, it was $35, but they... I have oh, I have some old ones, but that doesn't support that. Yeah, yeah I think, well, you try the old ones. Yeah, pl you you haven't plugged them into the TV. They should work. No, I haven't tried them. I just thought they were too old. Yeah, that, like, so uh, this is generation. the problem, is there's different kinds of casting. The screen casting, which is what LG calls it, they mean DLNA or Miracast, which is a Windows-only technology. You, But again, LG, and you could search for this in the Google Play Store, has a screencast app that'll do it. So that's the first thing to try. I think your Chromecast should work, even the old ones. But I really like the new Chromecast with Google TV. 4K will look, sports HDR, which your old ones will not, so it'll look great on your LG. Uh, I don't know what it costs in the Algarve, but uh, here in the U.S. of A, it's 50 bucks. I don't think they, they don't sell them here. <laughs> it's only Fire Store, Sticks. Store dot, yeah, everybody has Fire Sticks. Ick! Store.google.com. I bet you they'll ship it to you. That will solve all your woes and give you a great result, too. It's better than a Roku, I think. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. There is an HD version, but you want the 4K version. Yeah, and that was why I didn't really even try the old one. Yeah, because those won't give you HD. They won't even... Over here. Yeah, I mean, they'll give you HD. They won't give you 4K, yeah. 
Um, and so all of those premium maps, they have that, uh, that, that little Chromecast logo in the upper. Yeah, room. that's Chromecast. If they're on there. They'll, it'll support Chromecast. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's Google's technology. Yeah. But Do that's. all but, have to have it if they're in the play store? No. Uh, some don't. Which app do you want to use? Well, you know, all of them. What, the problem I'm having <laughs> is that my Vodafone router, I can't bridge. I have a flash, uh, you know, Netgear router that's for ExpressVPN, but it's having um, it's having a NAT conflict, uh, double uh, NAT, because I can't bridge, I can't bridge the... Uh, the provided router. router. They, won't, yeah. they won't let me do it, the provided router. They <sighs> won't let me do it. Well, there uh, it you worked go. for a while, and then somehow there was a conflict. Yeah, it's double net. Yeah, so don't you can't double use net, that. And I, yeah, and I, and I have to bridge, and they won't, and they won't let me do it. I have to so get commercial. With I them. like the Chromecast with Google TV. Uh, any Chromecast will give you that cast icon. That cast icon does not work with the LG as is because it's using DLNA, which is its own. Ah, it's a Windows technology. The answer. Thank the answer. you. Thank you. Sorry. Beat my head against the wall. <laughs> uh, I'll put a link to the <laughs> LG. LG has a a, a lovely uh, long document on how to screen share, and uh, it it'll give you the same answer. So, so that would be the that would be in the LG App Store. The yes. Now, Scooter X says his Funny. TV, his LG has Chromecast built in. So, check. You're looking for not. Screencast, but Chromecast. Right. But I don't, you know, I'm looking at this LG document. It doesn't mention Chromecast. But but uh, which which TV do you have, uh, Scooter X? I, have, I don't think my LG C-Series does. My C-Series OLED does. Uh, but I bought the Google. I don't know if this European model would, would somehow, like, if I, if I wasn't on the VPN, but I don't know how to. Yeah, it might be the European model also. The European model won't let me do it yes. with the content, yes. uh, the geofencing or whatever. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Europe. I did try to use a media streamer, uh, you know, new DNS uh, uh, setting from ExpressVPN, but that doesn't give you a VPN. It gives you this media streaming. and it, Yeah, yeah. So, so this is, it's. I blame Windows because they came up with 14 different names for this kind of thing, and it's, wow. but none of it is Chromecast. <laughs> try, you know what, the solution might be the LG app. That might just solve your problem. Okay. And then I guess what it does is screen shares. See, that's what Chromecast doesn't screen share. It actually sends the content from yeah. from that app, like Netflix, over. I yeah. remember when they first came out with that, I was trying to wrap my head around that. I was just like, what's going on? It's like, oh, no, it's not, it's not screen sharing. It's actually just... Huh. Doing it right. In fact, the it, it does a handoff from the phone, so that's actually a nice thing. It doesn't. Yeah. It uses yeah, the bandwidth yeah. on the TV on the uh, Chrome dongle. So, but but they're all saying that the LG supports Chromecast. So look for that in your settings. Make sure that's turned on. So it should be in the LG Store. Oh. There isn't. There is an app on the Play Store and the uh, iOS Store for LG called Screencast. So that's one thing to look at. But you can also look in the settings of your LG TV for Chromecast. And if you turn that on, uh, then you could just, from your Android phone, hit that Chromecast button and it should see your TV. Unless it's blocked by that router, which it could be. Yeah. yeah. Because and Europe. And my only thing, if I want to use the Roku so bad, is, is to use a Surfshark virtual rea uh, router. Or and something like that. It. Yeah, or go down like uh, to the beach and have some chicken piri piri and forget the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, just forget about all this nut nonsense. Just, just enjoy your life. <laughs> I know. I'm so well, jealous. As you know, I'm place. so jealous. Have a great have I a know. great day, John. <laughs> Wait, we'll see you here soon sometime. <laughs> I, I hope so, if I convince Lisa. <laughs> Obrigado. Obrigado. Adios. Adios. This is for Art LeBeau. I don't know who that is. <laughs> you young people, are you are you are you talking about something young person thing? He invent. Oh, he passed away. He invented. I know who you're talking about. The oldies, but I should know who he is. In fact, I'm amazed you do. Art, the great Art LeBeau invented the, or created the term oldies but goodies and probably played this song way too much. Passed away October 7th, American 
well-known American uh, disc jockey. Before my time. Before everyone's time. Before, pretty much before everyone's time. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Uh, uh, he was actually uh, up here in San Francisco in the 40s in the, and then uh, went down uh, down to Southern Cal and worked in uh, Palm Springs. He acquired the nickname As Long As He Lasts, which is a terrible nickname. <laughs> I don't know where he got that. Uh, was it KXLA, which is now KRLA, and was there for many years, so... The great Art LeBeau. Now that you say it, I remember it. Uh, David is on the line from Ontario, Canada. Hello, David. Hello. Hello. Welcome. What can I do for you, my friend? I'm looking for the name of requirement for Microsoft Teams. Oh, why would you want to run Microsoft Teams? It's not for me. My roommate is going to a college locally. Ah, and, and he's using it. Okay. So the good news about Teams from Microsoft is it'll run on, it's of course runs best on Windows, but it runs just fine on a Mac, a PC, a Chromebook. It runs almost everywhere. So what kind of computer does, does he have? It's not that. I need to know the minimum internet. Ah, internet speeds. So what have you got? I got 50 megabit oh, down. Yeah. That's plenty. That's plenty. You're going to be great. You're going to be just fine. In theory, in, in theory, it'll work with, it'll give you HD video with as little as one and a half megabits. So you're okay. 30 times better than that. Uh, and a 10 megabits up is plenty, plenty, plenty. But remember, it is more than just speed when you're talking about this kind of uh, video. Yeah, that's the other issue that we're doing over Wi-Fi. Yeah, so it will, it will be better if you connect via Ethernet, but you have, in theory, plenty of Wi-Fi speed. Latency okay. may be a larger issue. Be, and that yeah. So is, is his problem that it's a second between the time they call on him and the time he talks? Is no, it, his, his problem is he gets disconnected off the Wi-Fi. He gets disconnected. Yeah, Wi-Fi. Okay, so that is a Wi-Fi problem. Uh, when yeah. we do our shows, you know, we most of our uh, hosts uh, on the radio show and on our podcasts are are calling in via Zoom, but we could use yeah, Teams I, or we could use Skype. Yeah. And we always yeah. tell them. You might have heard us tell them, David, uh, no Wi-Fi allowed. And yeah. the reason I is, don't. the reason is Wi-Fi is a collision-based network, and it's weird, but this is what that means. If there's another Wi-Fi signal, do you live in an apartment or do you have, can you see other people's? I live in, I live in a house with room, rent rooms for rent. Okay. So there's other people on the Wi-Fi. Yes. And there are three people on the Wi-Fi. Yeah. And when you, and when, so that's part of the problem is that 50 yes, megabits is shared. Uh, but and also if there's that. another Wi-Fi signal from neighbors or so forth and there's, and they're on the same Wi-Fi band. You know, there's, there's Wi-Fi is tri-band. It's five gigahertz and it's 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah, it but there's within there, there's channels. And if you're somebody, if somebody's on the same channel on the same band as you, your Wi-Fi will pause and say, after you, Alphonse, and wait a random amount of time and then check again. And so what that sometimes do, creates is hesitation. So there's a couple of reasons there could be that blurp, that hesitation. One is that the roommates, that's a big one. Uh, and frankly, uh, getting off Wi-Fi wouldn't fix that. And the other no. is interference from other Wi-Fi signals. Uh, changing the channel sometimes will help that. But honestly, there's nothing better than wired. We always tell all our callers, all our... Uh, yes, I, I totally understand that. Yeah. And my landlord won't let me connect no. to the modem. Yeah, that's very common. By wire. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. want a wire. Yeah. 
No, that's a big issue. Um, so in theory, like you have sufficient speed, but uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is a it's problem. A, it's a Wi-Fi why, why, why from the cracking modem from my internet <laughs> provider. <laughs> it could also be that. Who's your internet provider? Is it Rogers? No, Virgin Plus. Oh, well. Which is a third party. Yeah. From Bell. Yeah, it's from Bell. Oh, great. Yeah. So and I know it. I know it's a very crappy router because I have to reboot it all the time because <laughs> I get oh. all the time. I'm running a a, a Netgear extender that costs me three hundred bucks just to connect to it, and I'm like three feet away from the modem. By the way, that extender is cutting your speed in half. Take it out. Because if he's on the extender, you're not getting 50 megabits. You're getting, at best, you're getting 25. Do a speed. You know what you should do on his uh, system? Uh, on the system he's going to use with Teams, do a speed test. And I want you to do it at dslreports.com, okay? The DSL reports, reports speed test. Because it will tell you not just the download and the upload speed. That's only part of the whole thing. It will also tell you your latency, and high latency is death to video phone calls. And it will also tell you something called buffer bloat, which is also uh, uh, problematic. So there, so it, it is a better diagnostic, uh, and it will tell you your real-time stats on that machine, which is all that matters. It doesn't matter what, what virtue tells you. It matters what you're getting on that machine. And I suspect that the other people in the house are making it bad for your uh, roommate. You might <laughs> say, go to class at night. Or no, I guess it better be in the day. Go to class when everybody's out of the house. Uh, <laughs> another one to try. that I, I always use DSL reports, but uh, Cloudflare, speed.cloudflare.com. What you want, though, is a, uh, a uh, test that will give you information about these extra things, not just speed, but ping and jitter. Actually, this you know what? This is a Cloudflare one is good. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, ping is your latency. So you want your latency to be, I would say, below 40 milliseconds. Uh, if it's more than 1,000 milliseconds, that's going to be problematic. Jitter is a big deal, though, when it comes to telecom. You want low jitter in the... In the, you know, single digit milliseconds, if possible. Um, and then, you know, I think what you're going to find is it's going to go up and down because of your uh, your neighbors. You've got really the worst of all possible worlds. You've got a an, an Internet router, a Wi-Fi router that is not controlled by you, is provided by the ISP, that your landlord won't let you get access into. You've got neighbors sharing it. <laughs> You're basically out of control. And uh, I think it's not, I think it's, it's the numbers they're telling you are not the numbers you're getting. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, DSL Reports is down. What happened? Did they go out of business? That's too bad. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to recommend speed. The Cloudflare one is great. I'm really liking it. Of course. Thank you, Cloudflare. Really nice. Oh, it's working there? Okay. Yeah, it's I'm, it's not coming up to me for some reason. Hello, Dickie Day. Lil, how are you? <coughs> how are you doing? <laughs> I, am, yeah. uh, I am very well. How are you? I'm good. Uh, is next week the week you're going away? Yes, it'll be Micah only next week. Okay. We're going to okay. see Katy Perry. Oh, that should be fun. Yeah, in Vegas. We're going to uh, a couple of our favorite restaurants. and We haven't been to Vegas since uh, the plague. So. Oh, <laughs> okay. And we want to go before it returns this fall. 
So it's all, you know, it's all. Are they, are they planning on a return? Yeah, Is I it think being so. Held over? I think it's being <laughs> held over. It's plagues coming out of retirement for oh one gosh. last tour. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what CES is like. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be going if I were you, but you know. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I spoke to Chad. I said, Chad, how about I read all the press releases yeah, you, and you, make you up go. a thing? <laughs> and You're you young. and our producer go. He <laughs> said, oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. So Nice. Well, that's cool. I did 30. Isn't that enough? Yeah. 30 CESs. <gasps> yeah. Did you do any Comdexes too or just? Uh, no. You were always a CES. Yeah, because Comdex was more yeah. PCs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And Comdex just vanished, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Shelly sold it. <laughs> Right okay. at the right time, uh, and uh, boom, it just it disappeared several a couple of years later. Oh, okay, yep. You know what I found that was fun. I was searching for Mad uh, the Mad Seventy, and I had no idea it's on Kindle. So my brother said, "Oh, what? I don't want to go to my, I don't want to go to Barnes and Noble." I said, "Stay there. I uh, I can buy it for you online That's and send awesome. you." Uh, yeah, I didn't know you had a brother. Yeah, where's he? Uh, in Connecticut. Do you go see? Yeah, you go see him once in a while, don't you? I guess I did. Know. Oh, well, yeah, once in a while. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're, like we don't talk for three months, but when we talk, it's like we were talking Old home yesterday. Week. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mainly because we're older, we say the same thing. So. Oh, it's via Comixology. Yeah. Comixology. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's sold by DC Comics, so it's it's the thing. Right. It's the thing. Mad Magazine, twenty eighteen. That's bizarre. What does that mean? You know what? It, it It's something to do with the numbering of the original Mads mixed in. Oh. I don't understand it because I asked, I asked somebody, I, I bought it for someone and sent it to them and said, just tell me, does this look like the Mad 70? And they said, it is the Mad 70. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so someone else said the 2018. So it's a 2018 is, number 28. As of 20, that's when they went, that's when they moved to LA, I'm guessing. Right. I think it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everybody dance. Get out on the floor. Here he comes. Disco Dick D. Bartolo, Mads, Maddest Writer, and our Gizmo Wizard. Hello, Dickie D. Leo, how are you, pal? I am very well. How are you? I am super well. Thank you. Uh, Dick joins us every week to flog Mad Magazine <laughs> <laughs> and to tell us about a gizmo or a gadget. Uh, and, of course, I always say go to his website, gizwiz.biz, and you can find out all about it. What is our yeah. gadget of the week? Well, you know what? Oh, we, we talked uh, off air a little bit about CES, and uh, fortunately, Pepcom uh, had a New York event with gadgets which is way easier because I can just take a, a lift car. So CES, which is the, the, the trade show formerly known as the Consumer Electronics Show, takes place in Las Vegas every January, so a few months from now. But there are a couple of companies, uh, Showstoppers and Pepcom, that, yes, uh, exactly. that have side, what they call side shows, uh, usually held in a hotel ballroom at uh, the same time as CES, but I guess Pepcom's figuring for people who aren't going to CES – we can we can have a little event in New York, which is great. Exactly, exactly. And and I found the the man who explained it to me called it a smartwatch, but it's very clever. It's more a smartphone on a watch. Oh, okay. This is for kids four to eleven. Oh, I have people right? asking for this all the time. So it's a phone. Okay, it, it is. Yes, you can make the the lower model. You can text and just send photos. The higher model, which is only $20 more, has a camera in it. So you can do video phoning. The thing is, I guess you don't tell the kid, everything goes through the parent's smartphone. So only the phone numbers that you let them call can call the watch. 
makes perfect you can, sense. Yes, and so the you, watch has, you don't let them make calls to any random. You just put in grandma and pops and mom. Exactly. Yeah. And then they can call them and, and their picture can come Perfect. up. And then it has GPS so oh. you can see where they are uh, all That's the time. a very, this is a good idea. And then it has uh, zone areas where when they go to school, if they vary too far out of where they should be. Geofencing, yeah. Geofencing, yeah. it'll let you know about nice. that. Yeah. Uh, water resistant. Uh, holds a thousand photos. It also has an alarm and a pedometer and there's some games in it. And when you play games, you win coins and then you can buy more games. Uh, and the games are active games, not video games, things so that there is some built in exercise. But the thing is, I said to the guy, I assume uh, I have to get your uh, text and video plan. And he said, yes. I said, well, how much is it? He said, well, you have to buy it by the year, but it's $8 a month. Oh, that's not <laughs> said, bad. That's a lot better than I the, the $10 no. I pay for my Apple uh, watch. That's good. Yeah, ex exactly. And then there's a higher plan that's $12. Okay. Um, what do I get for and, the extra four? Anything? You know, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm wondering if the cheaper watch uh, has the eight dollar plan and oh, and the okay. one with the video in it is twelve dollars. Yeah, maybe. Plan. Yeah, you need more uh, bandwidth. Yeah. But and and they don't look big and bulky like a kid's watch. I I think they look rather handsome. I think kids would be very impressed with this. And uh, available in three colors. I don't know if a four year old they, would would be happy wearing a wristwatch, but yeah, older. Uh, older. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, and uh, unlike the Apple Watch, it's it's a hundred bucks less than the cheapest Apple Watch, and you don't need an iPhone particularly, right? Because it work with any smartphone or. Uh, uh, you know what? I assume it will only because the the guy seemed to be really on the ball about this. Evidently, this is very big overseas, and uh, they're now selling it here, and it they've already lined up Target and Amazon and. Uh, it's kind of, it's like a Dick Tracy watch. It has a camera. My uh, Apple watch you know doesn't what? even have a camera in it. <laughs> no, you know, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just thought of, it's, it turns out that I'm still wearing an old uh, Galaxy watch that does have a camera. <laughs> so what? It, really? It, 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 it does. It uh, it can do one minute of video and... Uh, oh, this also has some uh, exercise components to encourage exactly, kids to exactly. get moving. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. The guy said, and we wanted to make it so that get kids away from the TV or, or the other screen. Uh, and they, they've they uh, teamed up with UNICEF and, and some other I am impressed. I'd love to talk to some it. parents who are using this. Uh, but yeah. that's X-P-L-O-R-A. And uh, you just go to gizwiz.biz. That's Dick's website. And you can uh, read all about it. And he has a link to the uh, Explorer uh, website, G I Z W I Z dot B I Z. Click the button that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guy. Oh, and while you're there, we're, you know, we're almost halfway through October. This would yeah. be a good time to uh, attempt to win what is perhaps the best Mad Magazine in years, the 70th anniversary. I would anniversary. say that, yeah. Yeah, you definitely want this. Um, Dick has autographed copies, 18 autographed copies of this magazine, up to six for the best. For, well, best. There's only one correct answer. It's a close-up <laughs> right. of a gizmo or a gadget. I have no idea what it is. Uh, Twelve Mad Magazines for the best cute wrong answer. So you can be wrong. You don't have to know what it is. And you'll be playing for this, which is the Mad Magazine. Notice I have it uh, uh, covered in plastic. Like, oh, my goodness. Like my sofa. I know this is a collector's, <laughs> a collector's item. Actually, this morning I spilled coffee into my MacBook, so I'm... I, oh, as long as you didn't ruin the mad. Yeah, the mad's okay, though. <laughs> That's the good news. Splashed right off the yeah. plastic cover. Yeah. Uh, well worth playing for. Go f go to gizwiz.biz. You can take a look at the Explorer. I'd love to hear from some parents who are using this or uh, how your kids like it, whether it's working for you. Uh, That'd be great. That would be yeah, great. yeah. And then play the What the Heck Is It contest. While you're at uh, the site, there's also other stuff like the uh, the gadget stick shows on ABC's World News Now every month and Mad Magazine collectibles and Match Game collectibles and all sorts of stuff. Fun fun site 
for everybody to visit. Gizwiz.biz. Dickie D. Yes, sir. If you're watching the uh, podcast network or Twit Podcast Network, Dick's going to stick around and do what we lovingly call the Giz Fizz, his, uh, his uh, afternoon show coming up in just a few minutes uh, on twit.tv. Thank you, Dickie D. Thank you, sir. Have fun in Vegas. Uh, yes, I won't be here next week. Micah Sargent will be filling in. You and Micah get along okay, though, right? Oh, Micah's great. That feud's Micah's over. Great. It's, uh, it's, uh, it is, yeah. It's all in the rear yeah. view mirror yeah. now. And he's starting to like you a little better. I, I straightened him out on your quirks. So <laughs> Is that what you call him? Quirks? Quirks. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't believe Dick was bald. He pulled on his uh, head and uh, he is. And he didn't yeah, believe yeah. I was uh, I wasn't bald, so he pulled on my hair and I am. And uh well, it's just been a, a mess ever since. But we're 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 working out the quirks. No, you guys are great together yeah, by the I way. Micah. I think you know that. Yeah, I love Micah. All right, Dickie D, have a great okay, week. Okay, buddy. You too. Uh, everybody, hi thee to gizwiz.biz and play the What the Heck Is It contest. I'm very curious about this Explorer. I get calls, as you probably heard on the radio show, we get calls all the time from uh, parents who say, you know, I, I want to keep a track of my kids. I don't want to buy them an iPhone. Is there a, an Apple Watch? Is very expensive. This might be a good uh, solution, the Explorer. Thank you, Professor Laura, musical director for... Uh, Spinning the tunes. Thank you to Kim Schaffer, our phone angel. She's the one who answers the calls and gets you on the air. And thanks, of course, most of all, to all of you for uh, joining us each and every week for the Tech Guy program. I'll be back tomorrow. Again, next week I won't be here, but just for Saturday, Micah Sargent will be. I'll be back on Sunday. In the meanwhile, everything we talked about goes up on the website, techguylabs.com, techguylabs.com, including audio, video, and a transcript, plus all the links. That's free, no sign-up, techguylabs.com. While you're there, you can see all the other shows I do for The Geek at Heart all week long on our Twit Podcast Network. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Have a great geek week. Well, that's it for The Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. -T, it stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.